来来来来来来来来！来来来来来来来！来来来来来来来来来！来来来来来来来来来来来来来来来来来来来来来来来来来来。来来来来来来，来来来来来来来来，来来来来。来啦啦啦啦啦！咿呀啦啦啦！来来来，来来来来来，来来来来来，来来来，来来来来来，来来来来来来，来来来来来。啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦。马祖布，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，弥陀佛，弥陀佛，弥陀佛。Ma tovu oleka Yaakov, oleka Yaakov, mishkinoteka Yisrael. Vani bro pastika avoveteka, eshtecha v'el haikol. Kodesha birateka, matobu oleka Yaakov, oleka Yaakov, mishkinoteka Yisrael. Adonai apimon beteka, umkom mishkan kevodeka. Vani eshteka vai vai krea e vai kalifne adonai osi ma tovu oleka Yaakov oleka Yaakov mishkinoteka Yisrael Vani tefilati leka. Adonai et ratzon, Elohim bro pastika, aneni bimet neshika. Matobu, oleka Yaakov, oleka Yaakov, mishkinoteka Yisrael. Matobu. Oleka Yaakov, Oleka Yaakov, 
Mishkinoteka Yisrael. And welcome, friends, and good morning to each and every one of you, wherever in this world you may happen to be. We are happy to have new friends and old friends from all over the world, from Russia, from Ukraine, from Belarus, from Hawaii, from um, pretty much everywhere that you can think of, including here in our own home area of extreme North Georgia and Tennessee. We are glad, we are happy, and we are joyous that you are with us for our morning Shabbat service. And for our Musa Shabbat service for today, the 26th of Sivan in the year 5782, which is to say June the 25th, 2022, according to modern secular calendar. This week, we're observing Shabbat Mevrachim Tammuz, the Shabbat before Rosh Chodesh Tammuz. Also this week, we are celebrating the overturning of Roe v. Wade and the sparing of lives of hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of innocent babies. Here at Congregation Beit Amuna, we use the Sephardic Shadur, Lev Eliezer, the Sephardic Arot Chumash, and Rabbi Israel Dov Odisayer's three-volume translation of Rabbi Nachman of Breslov's masterpiece, Likate Maharan. Our Parsha this week will be Shalach Lecha, Numbers 13.1 to 15.41. The Sephardic and Ashkenazi Haftar this week is Joshua 2.1 to 24. We will not be having a Likate Maharan reading today. Might of our Torah this week will be entitled Sadikim Live Forever. The righteous live forever. We'll turn now in our Sephardic Shadur Lev Eliezer to our morning blessings, which begin on page number 182. 182 in our Sephardic Shadur Lev Eliezer. Mode ani lifaneka, mode mode ani lifaneka, mode ani lifaneka, mode mode ani lifaneka, melek chai chai vikayon, melek chai vikayon, shahekazar ta binishmoti, bahimla rabahim unateka. Elohai nishma shinatata bi tehora. Ata berata, ata yesuta, ata nefatai bi. Elohai nishma shinatata bi. Elohai nishma shinatata bi. Elohai nishma shinatata bi. Tehora. Page 185. Baruchatadonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Who gave the rooster understanding to distinguish day from night. Baruchatadonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Who gives sight to the blind. Baruch Atadonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, who releases the imprisoned. Baruch Atadonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, who straightens the bent. Baruch Atadonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, who clothes the naked. Baruch Atadonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, who gives strength to the weary. Baruch Atadonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, who spreads the earth above the water. Baruch Atadonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, who prepares the steps of all people. Baruch Atadonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, who has provided us all our needs. Baruch Atadonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, who girds Israel with might. Baruch Atadonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, who crowns Israel with glory. Baruch Atadonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, who made me a people Israel, or of the Noahide peoples. 
Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, who made me free. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, who made me according to his will. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, who moves your strength to sleep from our eyes and slumber from our eyelids. And may it be your will, Adonai, our God, and God of our mothers and fathers, to have us study your Torah regularly, to hold fast to your commandments. Adonai, do not bring us into the grasp of sin, nor into the grasp of transgression. Do not cause us to be tested, nor tempted, nor scorned, nor held in contempt. Distance us, Adonai, from the Yetzer Hurrah, the negative inclination, and bind us to the Yetzer Hatov, the positive inclination. Grant us love, favor, kindness, and compassion in your eyes and in the eyes of all who see us. Brugata Adonai, bestower of bountiful kindnesses upon his people, Yisrael. We turn now to page 211, 211 in our Sephardic Sador. A person should always dwell in awe of God both privately as well as openly. A person should always admit the truth. A person should always speak the truth in his heart. A person should rise early each morning and proclaim, Master of all worlds, Lord of all lords. It's not on account of our righteousness that we offer our supplications before you. It is on account of your abundant mercy. Our masters, hear us. Our master, forgive us. Our master, listen and take action. Do not delay for your sake, our God, because your name is proclaimed over your holy city, over your people, wherever in the world we are. But what are we? What is our life? What is our acts of kindness? What is our righteousness? What is our strength? What is our might? What is our deliverance? What could we possibly say before you, Adonai, our God, and God of our mothers and our fathers? Are not all mighty people like nothing before you? Famous people as if they'd never lived? The wise as if they were without knowledge? People of understandings as if they were devoid of even the slightest amount of intelligence? All of our actions, Adonai, are but a waste. And the length of our days are trivial in your holy presence. The superiority of human beings over animals is nothing. Adonai, truth be told, everything is futile. Everything except this, except for the pure soul, which is destined to give a just accounting before your throne of glory. Otherwise, all the nations are like nothing compared to you. As it says, the nations are but a drop from a bucket. They're considered to be no more than dust on the scales. Behold the islands, Adonai. The islands are like fine powder. They just blow away in the slightest breeze. However, and it's a big however, we are your people. We are the children of your covenant. We are the children of Abraham, your beloved, to whom you swore on Mount Moriah. We are the seed of the sacrifice Yitzhak, who was bound on top of the altar. We are the community of Yaakov, your firstborn, whom, because of your great love for him and your joyous delight in him, you called his name to be Yisrael and Yeshurun. It is for this reason, Adonai, that we are obligated to thank you, to praise you, to glorify you, to exalt you, to offer our praises and thanksgivings to your great name. We are obligated, Adonai, to say shira or praises before you each and every day. Oh, how fortunate we are. How good is our portion. How pleasant is this, our destiny. How very beautiful is our heritage. We are so fortunate that we can rise early and stay late in synagogues and shuls, always proclaiming the oneness of your holy name by saying with love at least two times a day, Shema Yisrael. Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. 
You, Adonai, were one before you created the world. You were one after you created the world. You are almighty in this world. You are all right, already mighty in the world to come. And you and your years are never beginning and never ending. So sanctify your name in your world to the nation that hallows your sacred name. And through your deliverance, our king, uplift our power and deliver us soon for the sake of your name. Rukata Adonai, who sanctifies his name among the multitudes. Hashem sanctifies his name through us and through the blessings that he gives to us. When Hashem looks at us, he sees nothing but love. He sees his people and he is, celebrates his people and he is kind to his people. And he helps us in all of our ways. When we are weak, he gives us strength. When we are afraid, he gives us courage. When we need something, he helps us. When we are filled with inward tangles and concerns, he loosens those. As we find in the famous poem from the holy city of Svat, the Anna Bakoa. Anna, Anna Bakoa. Good lat ya minka ta tirzerura. Kabel rinat am kasag benu. Tarenu, tarenu nora. Ana bikoak. Good lat ya minka ta tirzerura. Kabel rinat. Am kasag benu tare nu nora nagi bor dorshe yekurka kavavat shomrem barchem takarim rakamim sid katka tamid golem ta kadi kasin kadosh. Kasin kadosh barav tuka nehel adeteka yechid geelim kapi nez lo break a shoot adeteka shavate nukabel ushmat sakete nu yodea talumot ana. Ana bikoa, a good lat ya minka, ta tirzerura. Kabel rinat am kasag venu, sa ta renu nora. Chavate nu kabael, ushma sakete nu, yodea. Yeah, I think so too. We turn now to page 247. Incidentally, just a reminder because uh, of the passage or uh, because of the end of Roe v. Wade today, we're likely going to be having Zoom bombers. As they come in, please let Ahuva and I and Gavi deal with them. Don't answer them back if they get in for about two seconds before we kick them out. The children are upset today and they're throwing tantrums. That's all this is. Don't worry about the little pro-death kitty. We now turn to page 247 for our Sukkay de Zimrot. <clears throat> Give thanks to Adonai and proclaim his name. Make his deeds known among all the nations. Sing to Adonai, compose songs to him, speak of all of his wonders. Take pride in uttering his holy name. Let the heart of those who seek Adonai rejoice. Search for Adonai and his might. Seek for his presence continually. Recall the wonders which he has performed, his miracles, and the laws of his mouth to the seed of Israel, his servants, 
the children of Yaakov, his chosen ones. He is Adonai our God, and the entire earth is governed by his laws. Remember his covenant forever, the word which he commanded for a thousand generations, which he made as a treaty with Abraham, which was his oath to Yitzhak, which he established for Yaakov as a statute, and for Israel as an everlasting covenant, when he said, to you, Israel, I give the land of Canaan to be the portion of your inheritance. When you were only few in number, very few, and strangers dwelt in it, they wandered from one nation to another and from one kingdom to another people. He permitted no one to oppress them. He admonished kings for their sake when he said, do not touch my anointed ones. Do not harm my prophets. So sing to Adonai all the earth. Proclaim his deliverance from day to day, his wonders throughout all the nations, his wonders among all people groups, because Adonai is great and he is most extolled. Awesome is Adonai among all the so-called gods. And the glory of Adonai shines through our beautiful children, Lador of Ador. And we are grateful for our children and we are grateful to Hashem. We turn now to page 255. <clears throat> Adonai Melech, Adonai Malach, Adonai Imlo Leolam Baeh. Adonai Melech, Adonai Malach, Adonai Imlo Leolam Baeh. Adonai is king. Adonai was king. Adonai will be king forever and forever. And Adonai will be king over the whole earth. On that day, Adonai shall be one, and his name shall be one. May that day come soon. Deliver us, Adonai, our God, and gather us among all the nations, so that we may give thanks to you and to your holy name, to be extolled in your praises. Rukata Adonai, the God of Israel, from this world till the next, and all the people of God said, Amen, but Amen, praise God, let every soul praise God. Hallelujah. We turn now to page 279 in our Sephardic Sudur Lev Eliezer. Um, it is pretty clear we are definitely being Zoom bombed. <laughs> so you may hear the ding ding occasionally just because we're being Zoom bombed. But don't worry about it. We know what we're doing over here. We have it well under control. Over on YouTube, we welcome Mary to Heart and Patricia Swords. Welcome, welcome. Glad that you guys are there. As well as the thousands of other people who are joining us on the RT network and on the other networks and various streams around the world. We're on page 279 for Tehillim 136. Tehillim 136 is a rejoinder, which means I will sing the first part or chant the first part, and you will respond with the phrase, for his kindness endures forever if you agree with what I say. For his kindness endures forever. You may do this with an open mic over the closed mic, and do not worry about trying to sync up with the other people because it's impossible. The scripture says, let a multitude of voices praise God. This is when our multitude of voices can truly rise to praise God. It's page 279. Give thanks to Adonai, for he is good. For his kindness. For his kindness forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. For his, for his kindness. kindness endures forever. Give thanks to the master of masters. For his kindness. For his kindness endures forever. To he who does great wonders alone. For his kindness. For his kindness endures forever. To he who makes the heavens with understanding. For his kindness. For his kindness endures forever. 
to he who spread the earth over the water. For his For kindness endures in river. To he who makes the sun to rule by day. For his kindness endures For his kindness forever. To he who makes the moon and the stars to rule by night. For his kindness, For his kindness endures forever. forever. To he who struck Egypt through their firstborn. For his kindness endures forever. To he who brought Israel from their midst. For his kindness endures forever. forever. To he who brought Israel out with a strong hand and an outstretched arm. For his kindness, For his kindness endures forever. To he who parted the sea of reeds into parts. For his, For his kindness endures forever. To he who brought Israel through it. For his kindness endures forever. To he who cast Pharaoh and his army into the sea of reeds. For his kindness, For his kindness forever. endures forever. To he who led his people through the wilderness. For his, For his kindness, For his kindness endures, forever. endures forever. To he who struck great kings. For his kindness endures forever. For his kindness endures forever. To he who slew mighty kings. For his, For his kindness endures forever. To he who slew Sikon, the king of the Amorites. For his For kindness. For his kindness endures forever. To he who slew Og, the king of Bashan. For his kindness endures forever. For his kindness endures forever. To he who gave their land to us as an inheritance. For his kindness endures forever. To he who gives an inheritance to Israel, his servant. For his kindness endures forever. In our lowliness, he remembered us. For his kindness endures forever. And he freed us from our oppressors. For his kindness endures forever. He overturned Roe v. Wade. For his kindness endures forever. And he gives food to all flesh. For his kindness endures forever. So let us give thanks to the God of heaven, for his kindness endures forever. The six one six six. Yeah. When I did Please keep your mics muted, if you would, if you're not actually talking to us. We know that happens sometimes, but uh, please do that. We'd appreciate it. We're on the bottom of page 283. 283. Would anyone care to read for us Tehillim 92, Psalm 92, either from the Siddur or from any translation you have? Psalm 92. Any volunteers? I could read it. Thank you. A psalm, a song for Shabbat day. It is good to thank God and I and sing praises to your name, most high, to relate your kindliness in the morning and your faithfulness in the nights. Upon a ten-stringed instrument and lute and meditation upon the harp, for you have given me joy, Adonai, with your deeds at the work of your hands, I sing joyously. How great you are your works, Adonai. How indefinite profound are your thoughts. A simpleton cannot know, nor does the fool understand this. When the wicked blooms like grass and all the evildoers blossom, it is so that they may destroy, be destroyed forever. But you will remain high forever, Adonai. For behold, your enemies, Adonai. For behold, your enemies shall perish. All evildoers shall be dispersed. You uplift my horn like that of a wild ox. I am saturated with fresh oil. My eye has seen the defeat of those who spy on me. My ears have heard of all the downfall of the wicked who rise against me. The righteous will blossom like a date palm, like a cedar in Lebanon. He will grow tall. Those planted in the house of Adonai will blossom in the courtyards of our God. They will still be fruitful in old age. 
they will be full of sap and freshness. To declare that Adonai is just, he is my stronghold in whom there is no injustice. Amen. Thank you for that, Lisa. Thank We're you. on pages 284 and 285 for Tehillim 93. Tehillim 93 in the Avrit. Adonai malach geut labesh, labesh Adonai o sitazar, af tikun tebel bal tumot, nikon kisachami az me olamata, nase un harot Adonai, nase un harot kolam, yesu nahrot dok yam. Mi kalot mayim rabim, adirim mishbareyam, adir bamaram adonai, eroteka neimu meod, lebateka navakodesh, adonai lehorik yamim. We join together now. We do this every week, but seldom have we had such a wonderful reason to do this as we do today on page 298 for the hallelujah. We sing hallelujah to our God. We sing hallelujah. Thank you, God, for your praises, for your kindness, and for the works of your hand. Thank you, Hashem. Beginning on page 200. And ninety-eight. Hallelujah, 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 And 26 in our Sephardic Sador, Lev Eliezer. We sing praises to God. We bless his name. We sing glory and honor to him. But we are not the only ones who do this. All of creation praises God, including the unborn in their mother's womb. We are all praising God. And right now we join together with the angels in the celestial realm in praise and thanksgiving to the Holy One, blessed be He. Be eternally blessed, 
our rock, our king, our redeemer, creator of holy beings. Praise be your name, our king, who formed ministering angels. Um, you, I don't really know who you are, but I muted you intentionally because I don't want you, uh, I don't want people sounding. Okay, she's gone there. Okay, thank you. Be eternally blessed, our rock, our king, and our redeemer, creator of holy beings. Praise be your name forever, our king, who forms ministering angels, whose ministering angels all stand to the heights of the universe to proclaim with reverence in unison loudly the words of the living god the king of the universe all of them are beloved all of them are pure all of them are holy and mighty all of them perform together with awe and reverence the will of their possessor and they all open their mouths in holiness and purity and with songs and with music they bless praise glorify and revere sanctify and proclaim the sovereignty of the name of the almighty god the king the great the mighty awesome one Holy is he. And they all take upon themselves the yoke of divine sovereignty, one from the other. They grant permission one to another to sanctify the, cre the creator in a spirit of serenity, with clear speech, with harmony, sweet harmony. And they proclaim his holiness in unison and with awe as they reverently exclaim, Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Adonai Savaot, Melachor, Ha'arez Kavadol. Holy, holy, holy is Adonai of hosts. The entire world is filled with his glory. And the Ophanaim angels, and the holy, holy Chayot angels, with a mighty sound, rise up towards the Seraphim angels. And facing them, they offer their praises. And they say, Baruch Kabod Adonai, Mine Kabod. Blessed is the name of Adonai in his place. And to the blessed Almighty, they offer their pleasant utterances and melodies. To the King, the Almighty, who is living and enduring, they utter their hymns, they make their praises heard. For he alone is exalted and holy. He alone is the performer of mighty deeds, the maker of all things. He alone is the master of all battles, the sower of acts of righteousness, the causer of deliverance to sprout forth, the creator of all cures. Awesome is he in praise, master of wonders. He renews his goodness each day, continuing the creation, the work of creation. As it is said, let us give thanks to Adonai, who makes the great luminary, for his kindness endures forever. Rugata Adonai, former of the luminaries. It is with great and everlasting love, Adonai, that you have loved us, our God. It is with great and abundant pity you have pitied us, our Father, our King. For the sake of your great name and for the sake of our forefathers and foremothers who trusted in you and whom you taught statutes of life to carry out your will with a perfect heart, so too, Adonai, be gracious to us and teach us, our Father, merciful Father, who acts with compassion. Please have compassion on us. Put into our hearts a comprehension to understand, to be intellectually created, to listen, to learn, to teach, to preserve and practice, to fulfill all the words of instructions found in your Torah and that always in love. Enlighten our eyes to your Torah. Cause our hearts to hold fast to your commandments. Unify our hearts to love and to fear your great name so that we may never be put to shame, disgrace, or failure. Because it is in your holy, great, powerful, awesome name, Adonai, that we have trusted. May we exalt and may we rejoice in your righteousness. And may your mercy, Adonai, our God, and your abundant kindness never forsake us now or forever. If you're wearing a Talit Gadol, the large prayer shawl, I invite you to take your tzitzit in your left hand. You will keep your tzitzit in your left hand until either the second or third paragraph of the Shema, according to the Minhag that you follow. 
usually you will put them in your right hand in either the second or the third paragraph. We usually do it in the third paragraph, in the third paragraph here, but it's entirely up to you. We're on page two, uh, 329, 329. And we approach Hashem with these words. And we ask him, Hashem, please hasten, hurry, quickly, speedily, bring upon us blessings of peace, quickly, from the four corners of the earth. Break off the yoke of the nations from our necks. Speedily lead us upright home to our land. Because you are the Almighty who performs acts of deliverance. And you have chosen us from among all the people groups and tongues. You have brought us near our King to your great name with love, so that we may give thanks to you and proclaim the oneness of your holy name with fear and with love. Brukata Adonai, who chooses his people Israel with love. The Shakrit Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Vahavta et Adonai Eloheka Bikol Yivavka Ukol Nafshika Ukol Meodeka Vahayu Hadverim Ha'elem Asher Anokim et Zavka Hayom Ali Babeka Vishinan Tam Lebaneka Vinibar Tabam Vashetika Bevateka Uvletika Bedetik Ukshot Bika Ukumeka Ukshatam Leora Yodeka Vahayulator of Fort Bain and Neka Uktav Tam Al Mazuzot Beteka Uvisha Reka Page 333. And it will be if you will vigilantly obey my commandments, which I charge you this day. And what is that commandment? To love Adonai, your God, and to serve him with your entire hearts, with your entire soul. That's what Hashem requires. If you do that, I will give rain for your land at the proper time, the early autumn rain and the late spring rain. You will harvest in your grain, your wine, and your oil. I will put grass in your field for your cattle. You will eat and be satisfied. But beware, lest your hearts be swayed and you turn astray to worship foreign gods or to bow down before them. Because if you do that, the fury of Adonai will blaze among you. He will close off the heavens and there will be no more rain. The earth will not yield its produce and you would then perish swiftly from the good land that Adonai gives to you. Why are we in the diaspora? That's why we did not do that. Why have we having? Why either have we not been able to, or having too many troubles going home to our land? That is why. Serve God with all of your heart, all of your soul, and all of your might, and perhaps Hashem will bless you and allow you to return home to our land. Place these words of mine upon your hearts and upon your soul. Bind them as signs upon your hands. Let them be as frontlets between your eyes. Speak to them and teach your children. When you sit in your house, when you travel on the road, when you lie down, and when you rise. Write them on the doorpost of your house and your gateways in order that your days should be prolonged in the days of your children upon the good land which I and I gave to your fathers for as long as the heavens are above the earth. So Adonai spoke to Moshe Rabbeinu, and he said to him, speak to the children of Israel, tell them to make for themselves tzitzit on the corners of their garments throughout their generation. They are to place with the tzitzit at each corner a thread of tehelet. This will be for you tzitzit. You will look upon it and you will remember all the mitzvot of Adonai, and you will perform them, and you will not turn aside after your hearts or after your eyes, which could cause you to go astray, so that you should remember to perform all of his commandments. You are to be holy before your God, and I am Adonai, your God, who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim to be your God. I am Adonai, 
your God. And this holy congregation of Beta Muna agreed and said, Emet, yeah. it is true. Adonai, our God, is Emet. And firm, certain, enduring, upright, faithful, beloved, cherished, desired, pleasant, awesome, mighty, correct, acceptable, good, and beautiful. Is this affirmation of the Shema for us for all of eternity? Yes, it is Emet that the God of the universe is our king, that the stronghold of Yaakov is the shield of our deliverance, and that throughout our generations, he endures, and his name endures, and his throne is confirmed, and his sovereignty and his faithfulness endure forever. His words are alive and enduring. They are faithful and desirable forever and forever, for all of eternity, for our mothers and fathers, for us, <clears throat> for our children, for their children, 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 Lador, Vador, through all the generations of the seed of the house of Israel, your servants. Upon the first generation, and upon the last generation, this Shema is a matter that is good and that is everlasting in truth and in faithfulness. The Shema is a law that is never to be abrogated because truly you are Adonai, our God, just like you were the God of our mothers and fathers. You are our king, just as you are the king of our mothers and fathers. You are our redeemer, just like you were the redeemer of our fathers and our mothers. You are our maker. You are the rock of our deliverance. You are our liberator. You are our saver, which was your name from old. And besides you, Adonai, we have no God. We look to you, Adonai, and to none other. Our hope comes from Hashem alone. We're now on page 341 for the Amidah, the Shakrit Amidah. If you uh, are Jewish, I invite you to observe the Shakrit Amidah according to your own minhag as normal. If you are not Jewish, I invite you to spend this time in personal prayer and reflection. If you are considering taking my Judaism 101 class in the fall, I would encourage you to have your Shadur to read the entire Amida as we go through it. Uh, if you are, by the way, going to take that class, I encourage you to pick up a copy of Shadur Lev Eleazar. Betamunit.org has a link to it on the front page. The Amida will go from page 340 to page 371. Please rise with me as you're able for the Shakrit Amida. I don't know open up our lips that our mouths may declare your praise. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God and God of our mothers and fathers, God of Abraham, God of Yitzhak, God of Yaakov, the Almighty, the Great, the Powerful, the Awesome, Most High Almighty, who bestows beneficent kindness and possesses everything, who remembers the piety of the patriarch and who brings the Redeemer to us, their children's children, for the sake of his name, with love. King, helper, deliverer, and shield, Rubita Adonai, shield of Abraham. <clears throat>
Amém. Act for the sake of your name. Act for the sake of your right hand. Act for the sake of your Torah. Act for the sake of your holiness. Act for the members of Beidim and the congregation. Act to protect our Supreme Court justices who made the decision to save babies' lives. Act for the babies in the womb in order that your beloved may be released. Deliver us with your right hand and answer us. Amen. 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 Oh, say shalom bim romal. Oh, ya say shalom aleinu. They are called Israel. Bim ru, bim ru, amen. Ya say shalom, ya say shalom. Shalom aleinu, ya call Israel. Ya say shalom, ya say shalom. Shalom aleinu, ya call Israel. Bim ru, We're on page 371 of our Sephardic Shadur Lev Eleazar. You were all shown to know that Adonai is God and that there is none other besides him. That there is nothing like Adonai among all the so-called gods. That he is our master and there is nothing like his words. <clears throat> May Adonai, our God, be with us as he is with our mothers and fathers. May he not forsake us nor abandon us. Deliver your people, Adonai. Bless your inheritance. Tend to them. Uplift them forever. Arise, Adonai. Let all of your enemies be scattered. Let all of those who hate you flee from before you. Arise, Adonai, to your abode, you and the ark of your might. May your priests once again be dressed in righteousness. May the Sadakim once again sing before you joyously in your holy Beit HaMikdash in the presence of Mashiach ben David. For your sake and for the sake of your servant David, do not turn your face away from your anointed. Blessed is the name of the master of the universe. Blessed is your crown and your place. May your favor be with your people, Yisrael, and those who stand with us forever. So please, Adonai, show us the redemption of your right hand. Show it to your people, the coming of Mashiach ben David, and then the building of the holy temple. Bestow your excellent light upon us and accept our prayers with compassion. May it be your will, Adonai, to prolong our lives and our well-being. Let us, your servants, be counted among the righteous so that you would have compassion on us, so that you would protect what belongs to us and what belongs to all of Israel, your people, and what belongs to all of those who stand with us. You are the one, Adonai, who nourishes and maintains all. You are the one who rules over all. You are the one who rules over kings, and kingdoms are yours, Adonai. And we are your servants, the servants of the Most High. Blessed be he. And we bow before you, Adonai, before the honor of your Torah at all times. Not in human beings do we place our trust. Not in international bodies do we place our, our trust. Not in Supreme Court decisions do we place our trust, even though this decision to correct a wrong they did almost 50 years ago, Baruch Hashem, thank you for that. Not in any angel do we put our faith. We put our faith, our imuna, only in you, Adonai, because only you are the God of heaven. You are the true God. Your Torah is true. Your prophets are true. And you perform innumerable acts of goodness and kindness in truth. And you alone, Adonai, do we put our trust. 
and in your holy honored name do we utter all of our praises. And may it be your will, Adonai, to open our hearts to your Torah and to fulfill the desires of our heart that we should know you and the desires of your people, Israel, for goodness, for life, for peace. And the people agreeing said, Amen. Amen. Well, amen. Incidentally, I posted a graphic a couple of days ago that makes a very interesting point. The root of Amen is the same root as the word Imuna. Amen means I have faith in what I have heard. This is why normally we don't say Amen to our own prayers. There's some exceptions. But if you hear a person speaking truth, the correct response is, Amen. What you said is true. Amen. And when you say Amen, you are saying, I have Imuna, that what you just said is going to come to pass. Imuna is the foundation stone upon which all truth, the foundation stone upon which our future. The foundation stone upon which all of our children's future, the door of a door, resides. It is all Amuna. In fact, in the Torah, Hashem says, all of my acts are Amuna. We turn now to page 376. Mbaku et Adonai Hambarach. Amen. Uh, Patricia, I put that on most of my social media sites, Facebook or wherever. Scroll down just a little bit and you should see it. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who chose us from among all the people groups, who gave us this holy Torah. Brukata Adonai, the giver of HaTorah. Our Parsha this week is <clears throat> Parsha Thaliklika. It is Numbers chapter 13, 1 to 1541. We'll be reading from the Arot Chumash, a Sephardic translation and commentary that is quite wonderful. Beginning at 13, 1. It might read a bit different than the version you're reading if you're following along, but it should be close. And Hashem spoke with Moshe saying, send for yourself men and they should spy out the land of Canaan, which I will be giving to the children of Israel. One man, one man from the tribe of his fathers shall you send. Each shall be a, P, a prince among them. So Hashem is going to give you a sneak preview of what he's going to give you. Let's see if your Amuna holds up. Verse 3. So Moshe sent them out from the wilderness of Paran by the word of Hashem. And they all were men. They were all the heads of the children of Israel. And these were their names. So. When the spies were sent out to spy the land, these are their names. From the tribe of Reuben went Shamua, a son of Zukur. From the tribe of Shimeon went Shaphat, the son of Hori. From the tribe of Yehuda, Kalev, the son of Yefune. From the tribe of Yisachar went Yigal, the son of Yosef. From the tribe of Ephraim went Hoshea, a son of Nun. N-U-N. -N. That was his name, not N-O-N-E. From the tribe of Benjamin, Palti, son of Rufa, uh, Rufu. From the tribe of Zebulun, Gadiel, the son of Sodi. From the tribe of Yosef. For the tribe of Manasseh, Gadi, son of Susi. For the tribe of Don. Amiel, the son of Gomali. For the tribe of Asher went Sitor, the son of Michael. For the tribe of Nephtali went Nabi, the son of Vopsi. From the tribe of God, G-A-D, 
went Geuel, the son of Maki. These are the names of the men whom Moshe sent to espy the land. And Moshe called Hoshea, the son of Nun, Yehoshua. And Moshe sent them out to espy on the land of Canaan. And he told them, ascend this way. In the south, you shall ascend the mountain and you shall view the land. What is it? It is a nation and the nation that dwells on it. Is it mighty? Is it weak? Is it a few or is it many? And what is in the land in which it dwells? Is it good or is it bad? And what are their cities in which they dwell? Are they in open camps or in fortresses and walled cities? And what is the land? Is it wealthy or poor? And there in it are trees or not? And you shall strengthen yourselves. And you shall take from the fruit of the land after the days were the days of the first ripening of the grapes. So I want you to go and check out these people because we are an army. We need to know what we're going to be confronting. No one goes to war except the United States without knowing who the enemy is and whether or not they can defeat them. This is why we have been losing wars so much lately. You need to know what your enemy is doing. If you are planning to fight your enemy, you need to know the strength of your enemy, the wealth of your enemies, the weaknesses of your enemy. How many enemies are there? So he says, go and find out. Verse 21. And they ascended and they espied the land from the wilderness of Sin to Rechol, to the approach of Hamat. And they ascended in the south, like, he would, like they were told, and he came to Hebron. And there were the Achiman, the Shishai, and the Talmai, the children of the giants. Now, we talked a lot about this on Thursday, a lot. We actually had a great time talking about it. These were the descendants of the Nephilim that beheld the women of man were beautiful and have relations with them to produce these giants. This is where we find the story, and we have found actual bones in the Middle East of these giants. This is not myth. This is true. And in Hebron was built seven years before Son of Egypt, and they came to the Eshkol Ravine, and they cut from there a vine and one cluster of grapes, and they carried it on a pole with two and from the pomegranates and from the dates. You can actually go into the Eshkol Valley when you visit Israel and you can actually see the area where they believe that these fruits were grown and there are beautiful vineyards that are growing there and they make wine. And the wine is really, really good and the wine is illegal in most of Europe because it's being created in the areas that the enemies of God do not accept as part of Israel. 24. To that place, he called the Eshkol Ravine on account of the Eshkol, the cluster that the children of Israel cut from there. And they returned from spying on the land at the end of 40 days. Remember that number, they spied out the land for 40 days. And they went after that and they came back to Moshe and to Aharon and to all the congregation of the children of Israel to the wilderness of Paran and to Kadesh. And they returned to them a report and to the entire congregation. And they showed them the fruit of the land. And they told them, and they said, we came to the land to which you sent us. It is a land flowing with milk and honey. And these, these big, huge bunches of giant grapes and whatnot, these are the fruit of that land. It's a good report. The land is rich in, in produce. It is a good land for growing crops that could sustain our people. But, verse 28, except that powerful is the nation which dwells in the land, and the cities are very fortified, they're walled cities, and they're large, and also the children of the giants we saw there. We saw the descendants of the Nephilim there, the Raphaim and others. We saw them. Plus, 
Amalek dwells in the land of the south, and the Hitti and the Yavusi and the Amori dwell in the mountains, and the Kanani dwell by the sea and next to the Yarden River. So you know this word Amalek. We use the word today to refer to something that is evil. You are like Amalek. But Amalek was actually one of the kings of the land that the Jews had to dispose of to be able to conquer the land. So they brought a good report. The land that God brings us to is wonderful, but they will crush us. We are not strong enough. We do not have a Muna that we would be safe there. Verse 30. And Kalev quieted the nation. The people, oh my God, what are we going to do? Oh, no, no, no. So Caleb tried to calm him down. He quiets the nation to listen to what Moshe is going to say. And he said, we will surely ascend and we will inherit it, for we surely shall prevail over it. Moshe has a Muna. Caleb has a Muna. But most of the people do not. 31. And the men who ascended with him said, but we cannot ascend to the nation, for it is mightier than we are. And they brought forth an evil report of the land when they spied it out to the children of Israel, saying, the land through which we pass to spy it is a land that consumes its inhabitants. The land itself would kill us. And all the people that we saw within it are men of measures. They are giants. They are powerful. They are strong. They are fierce. We could never fight them. And, 33, there we saw the fallen ones. The fallen ones are the Nephilim. We saw the Nephilim. They live in this land. The Nephilim. Remember the, when we were reading in Bereshit. We know the Nephilim, and they're there. And the children of the giants are there. The, fallen, the children of the fallen one are there. Not only are the Nephilim there, they're still reproducing with the women. And they're producing these giants like Goliath. And we were in our own eyes like grasshoppers. So were we in their eyes. When these people looked at us, they thought, these are grasshoppers. I can stomp them out. They're giving really seriously bad news to the people. They're implanting fear in their hearts. You're not strong enough. They would just kill you like you were a grasshopper. 14.1. And the entire congregation then lifted and gave their voice. And the people cried out in the night. Moses is going to lead us to kill us, they thought. We have to do whatever he says. And he's going to lead us in there. And it's going to kill us. And oh, my goodness. No one loves me. Everybody hates me. I'm going to go eat worms. They're terrified. Verse 2. And so they complained about Moshe and about Aharon. The children of all the children of Israel, the entire congregation told them, if only we would have perished in the land of Egypt or in the wilderness, if only we would have perished there. So why is Hashem bringing us to this land where we're going to fall by the sword? Our wives and our little children, we will be for them plunder. It is, not better, is it not better for us if we return and go back to Egypt? Think of everything. Excuse me. Think of everything these people have seen. They saw the parting of the Sea of Reeds. They saw the angel of God in front of them. They heard the voice of God. They agreed to the covenant. And still they're saying, maybe we should go back to Egypt because these guys are too strong for us. Sound familiar? Four. And they said, every man to his brother. Let's appoint a leader and return to Egypt. So Moshe fell, as did Aharon in their faces, before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel, and Yehoshua, a son of Nun, and Kalev, the son of Yephaniah, and all of those who were spying on the land, they rent their clothing. This is what you do in Israel when you have no choice left. There's death coming. You rent your clothes. We're dead. And they said to all the congregation of the children of Israel, the land which we pass through to spy upon it is a very, very 
very good land. If Hashem desires us, he will cause us to enter that land and he will give it to us. A land flowing with milk and honey. Why are you afraid? Haven't you seen what he's already done? Haven't you seen how he's already stood for us? He will do it again. Now he will give us this wonderful land. Verse 9. But, I would actually say so here just for the connector, but against Hashem do not rebel. And you, you should not fear the nations of the land, for they are our bread. We're going to eat them. It's not going to be the other way around, like this negative person said. Their protective shade has withdrawn from them. Now Shem is with us. Do not fear these people. Practice your imuna. Put your imuna into play, he says. And the entire congregation said to bombard them with stones. They're going to stone Moshe. Can you believe that? After everything they say, they're going to stone Moshe and Aharon. And the honor of Hashem then appeared in the tent of meeting. They're getting ready to stone the man of God. And the honor of Hashem appeared. It does not say Hashem appeared as a man. He doesn't do that. The honor of Hashem appeared. To all the children of Israel. Once again, they're all going to see the Shekinah. They're all going to see the presence of God in their midst. So there's no question that God is with us. Wouldn't you think that would have done it? Verse 11. So Hashem said to Moshe, Until when will we bring this nation's anger against me? And until when will they not trust in me? with all the demonstrations that I have performed in their midst. How many times do I have to prove myself? <clears throat> How many times today we hear people say, if only God would prove himself to me. He has and he does it every moment of the day. That would not actually convince anybody. If an angel of God appeared in front of you, you would say it was a hologram caused from some Hollywood producer. God gave them every conceivable way to know, and they rejected it. Verse 12, therefore, I will strike them with a plague. I will destroy them all. He's telling this to Moses. I will fashion you into a nation that is larger and mightier than they are. Remember, at the time of Noah, God got so fed up with the sins of man that he wiped out everything and everybody. So now he's saying, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to wipe out this whole community, uh, Moses, and I'm going to start all over again. You're going to be the new Noah. And your descendants are going to be my people. Now, when Noah was told this, what did Noah say? Noah said, how do we build an ark? Moses does not. Moshe Rabbeinu does not. Verse 13. Moshe said to Hashem, <clears throat> if you do that, all of the Egyptians will hear that you raised with your power the nation from their midst. In other words, the Egyptians are watching you, as are all the other nations who see your power so far. And then if you do this, they will say, to everybody else, all the inhabitants of the land who have heard about you, Hashem, how you were in the midst of this nation, that with their own eyes saw you, Hashem, they saw your, cow, your cloud was cast over them. They saw your pillar of a cloud, that you led them in the daytime, and there was a pillar of fire at night. And if you would now kill this nation, as one man, then those other nations, instead of giving you honor, I added that bit, they would say that once they hear your report, it was for a lack of ability that Hashem to bring this nation to the land that he swore them, <clears throat> that he slaughtered them in the, in the wilderness. 
In other words, if you destroy these people, the other nations are going to say, see, Hashem's not so great. He couldn't bring them to the land that he pro we promised. Why should you believe him? He's too weak. God can't do that. The God of Israel is not so strong. Verse 17. So when you are seeking something from God, your first reaction should be for God's glory, not for your own. We are his servants. God, if you would do this thing, it would enhance your glory. I will give you the praise. I will give you the thanksgiving. There is, by the way, an important thin line between let me tell you what God did for me and let me tell you what God did for me, if you get my cadence. There's a difference between praising God's glory and boasting and implying that somehow you're somebody special and therefore God moved on your behalf. Moshe says, God, your glory demands that you not do that. It would be a disgrace to your glory. 17. So now, let now be great in the power of Hashem. Instead of defaming yourself, God, increase your glory as you have spoken, saying, Hashem is slow to anger, abounding in the performance of kindness, who bears iniquity and rebellious of sin, who absolves, who does not absolve, and who visits the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, even upon the third generation. And upon all of the fourth generation, in other words, let your mercy add to your glory. We've already seen your power, and the nations have seen your power. But now add to your power an actual evidence of your kindness and your mercy by forgiving these people. 19. So forgive now the iniquity of this nation akin to the abundance of your kindness as you bore with this nation and with Egypt, as you bore the nation from Egypt until here. Now, God already knew what he was going to do, but this is how we can actually reason with God. And this is an evidence of why your prayers matter, because when you go to God in prayer, God listens. And he will not at literally change his mind, but he will include your prayer in his calculation. Prayer is powerful. It matters. 20. And then Hashem said, I have forgiven according to your word. I will forgive these people yet again. Nevertheless, I am alive. And the honor of Hashem fills all the land. For all of the men who see my honor and my signs, which I performed in Egypt and in the wilderness, and they tested me these 10 times, and they did not hearken to my voice, I will forgive them. 10 times, some rabbis will break it down exactly what these 10 times are. I don't think 10 necessarily means 10. 10 as a number means many. It is, it can, it's a bunch of times. Take as literally as you want to. But I think what he's saying is the fact that I'm going to forgive them yet again. 23. But, but Teshuvah requires a change of heart. I am going to forgive them, but they're going to have to earn it. And it's not going to be easy. 23. If these people see the land which I swore to their fathers, and all of those who angered me will not see it. Now they've all seen the land from the distance. And the spies saw the land. These people, however, are not going to see the land. And my servant Caleb, or Caleb, my servant Caleb, in exchange for that which there was a different spirit about him, he has filled his heart after me. Because Caleb, or Caleb, is a man who loves me, has me in his consciousness. I'm going to be different with him. I will cause him to enter the land to which he entered there, and his descendants will be driven away from the inhabitants of it. I'm going to let Caleb go in because he had a Muna, but his children did not have a Muna. They're not going in. 
for his brother and sister. 25. And the Amalek, the Amalekites, their leader was Amalek. The Amalites, Amalekites, and the Canaan, the nations of Canaan, the various national groups, they were primarily um, a fiefdom of aligned pagan groups, the Canaanite, who dwell in the valley. Tomorrow, we'll, you will turn around and travel yourselves back into the wilderness by the way of the Sea of Reeds. In other words, you got right to the border of the promised land, but now turn around and go back. And Hashem spoke to Moshe and to Aharon, and he said, Until when, for the wicked of the congregation, did they first begin to complain against me? The complaint of the children of Israel, which they caused to complain against me, I have heard. When you pray with the Muna, Hashem hears. But when you curse God's name, he also hears. When you speak words that lack Emuna, he also hears. He pays attention. And he heard their faithless utterances, 28. So tell them this. Tell them, I am alive. This is the pronouncement of Hashem. If not as you have spoken in my ears, so I will do to you. Today, we have a bunch of people who don't believe Hashem is alive. They believe in sort of a collective consciousness of a God consciousness. They don't believe God's actually a living being. This includes a lot of Orthodox Jews, as well as a lot of non-Orthodox Jews, a lot of non-observant Christians, a lot of people all over the world. They believe in the God concept, but they don't believe there actually is a being who can say, Ani, I. God is alive. He is an existing being beyond our conception, but he is an existing being who hears. As a board member of the Jewish Pro-Life Foundation, we received a letter from a rabbi in Florida asking one of us to debate him on the matter of the legalization of abortion. Cecily sent it out to, we have four rabbis on our board. Um, I think we have four, we have three, I think we have four. And um, so, yeah, we have four. So Cecily um, sent out an invitation to the rabbi saying, would any of you be willing to debate with this guy? I wrote back and said, no. If this man is claiming to be a rabbi and he doesn't know when the Bible says, choose life so that you and your children may live. When he says, I have known you from your mother's womb, he's claiming to be a rabbi and he doesn't even have that amount of biblical knowledge. I'm not going to waste my time. So I wrote him back a very polite letter about why I was going to decline. He wrote back to me and said, what denomination are you with? First of all, Jews wouldn't use the word denomination. They'd use the word movements. Which denomination are you with? You sound like a Christian to me. Believing in the Torah and the Tanakh to many of these modern American rabbis means you sound like a Christian because they don't. They don't believe in the Torah. They don't believe in the Tanakh. They don't believe God is an individual being. And if you say you're a Jew and you believe what the Torah says, oh, you sound like a Christian. It's a very, very poor statement about Judaism today in the, in the United States. You would not hear this from hardly any rabbi in Israel. You hear it from a large percentage of the ones in the United States. It's, it's truly tragic. Anyway, God says, I am alive. I am an individual being. I hear when you speak, and I take note. So, you're not going to go in because of your lack of amuna. Verse 29. In this wilderness will your corpses fall, and all of your counted. All Remember when we last couple of weeks we bought, did all this counting, 20, 20 years old, all that counting? All of those people that we counted according to all of your numbers, from the age of 20 years old and above, those of you who have complained against me, and we happen to know that all of them did, except basically Caleb, you're not going to go in. 
you're under 20, maybe I won't hold you responsible. But if you're over 20, you're not going in. Now, have you ever met people that God has actually said, don't do that? In their innermost beings, they know this is not God's will. It is not God's will to murder children, but I'm going to do it anyway. It's not God's will that I should steal, but I'm going to do it anyway. Some of these people there said, no, no, no. Moses brought us to the land. We're going in anyway, whether God likes it or not. <laughs> That's foolishness. Verse 30. He warns them ahead of time. And if you enter into that land, that which I raised my hand to settle you there. If you go into that land where I was going to give it to you, other than Kalev, the son of Yephuneah, and Yehoshua, the son of Nun, and your small children, that you said regarding them, they will be for plunder. I will bring them and they will know the land, which you have abominated. They said, but it's the children. We have to protect the children so we can't obey God. Your children are going to go in, but you're not. And your corpses, your corpses will fall in the wilderness. And your children will carry in the wilderness for 40 years. And they will bear your sin until your corpses cease to exist in the wilderness. Because of what you've done, your children are going to be punished for 40 years more in the wilderness. 34. In the number of days that you spied out the land, 40 days, a day for a year, a day for a year, you will bear your iniquities for 40 years. Then you will know my withdrawal. I am Hashem and I have spoken. If not that, I will do this to the entire congregation who has convened against me in this wilderness. They're going to cease to exist. And there they will die. Now, those of you who take my Thursday class um, the elucidated direct Hashem. We've talked a few times about how Ram Call and some of our other sages believe that it is possible to become so ungodly that God will allow you to cease to exist, that he would actually destroy your soul. I want you to notice something here. It says here very clearly that those people who lack faith would not be allowed on the land and they will cease to exist and there they will die. Now, Torah also tells us that every single Jew, past, present, and future, was personally present at Har Sinai. That happened before this. Clearly then, the souls did not cease to exist in a literal sense. The people died, but the souls live on, because the soul, once created by God, is eternal. This is why the Sadducees ruled that there is no afterlife because of this verse and others like it. But as rabbinic Jews, we know that there is in fact an afterlife. And the God is merciful. Even when he kills us for our evils, our souls continue to exist and can still be redeemed. Verse 36. And as for the men whom Moses sent us by the land, and they returned and they complained against Hashem before the entire congregation, to bring forth this evil report about the land, those men die who brought forth an evil report from the land. They all died by a plague before Hashem. And Yehoshua, Joshua, Yehoshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, or Caleb, the son of Yephuneah, only those survived among the people who went out to spy out the land. And Moshe spoke these words with all the children of Israel. The nation mourned greatly. And when they awakened early in the morning, 
and they ascended to the top of the mountain from which they could see all the land. And they said, okay, okay, we've learned our lesson. Behold, this is what I was talking about a minute ago. I got a little bit ahead of myself. Now we see the land laid out in front of us. We're going to climb the mountains to the place where Hashim said, we admit we sinned. You're going to make Teshuvah. We admit it. We made a mistake. We sinned. We're ready to go into the land. But Moses said to them, why is this that you are transgressing the word of Hashem? You will not be successful. Did not God say now you're not allowed in there at this time? You're again rebelling against God, but you're doing it in the name of obeying God. I was in D.C. a month or so ago countering a protest of Jews who were claiming that killing children is a great virtue. They were claiming we have to do this because the Torah says, as they misquoted the Torah, when God says don't do something, friends, don't do it. And if that makes me sound like a fundamentalist Christian, so be it. God said, now because of your sin, do not enter that land. Do not ascend, verse 42, because now Hashem is not in your midst. If you ascend now, you will be smitten by your enemies. You had your chance to get the land. Now you're going to have to wait 40 years. We don't want to wait 40 years. We'll take it now. Nope. 43. For Amalek and the Kanani and the nations of the land that are there before you, will cause you to fall by the sword. For because of that which you turned away after from following Hashem, Hashem will not be with you. You can always make teshuva, but that doesn't mean you're not going to sometimes be punished for what you did anyway. But they acted brazenly. So they ascended to the top of the mountain. They brought the Ark of the Covenant of Hashem. I'm, I'm sorry. They ascended to the top of the mountain, but the Ark of the Covenant of Hashem and Moshe did not leave the camp. So remember when they were fighting, it was nine times out of ten in the Ark of the Covenant that saved them and protected them. Moshe said, nope, I'm not going, and the Ark's staying here. You guys are blowing it. You're going to die. And they did it anyway. 45. And the Amalek, the nation of the Amalekites, descended upon them, as did the nations of the Kaanani which dwell on that mountain. And they struck them and they routed them all the way to Hormah. They're chasing the Israelites. And the Israelites are running scared for their lives all the way to Hormah. 15.1. So Hashem spoke with Moshe and he said, speak to the children of Israel and say to them, when you will enter into the land, of your residences, when I allow you to go into the land, which I'm giving you in 40 years, and you make a fire offering to Hashem, a burnt offering or a sacrifice to express a vow or by a donation or on your festivals to make a pleasing aroma to Hashem from your cattle or from your sheep, then he shall bring close to the one who brings the close, who brings close his offering to Hashem. And a minka offering, an afternoon, a tie, the minka, an offering of a tenth, a fine flour mixed with a quarter hen of oil and wine for a libation and a quarter of hen. You shall then make that a burnt offering or with a sacrifice for one lamb or for the lamb. You shall make a meal offering, two tenths of fine flour mixed with a third of a hen of oil and wine for a libation, a third of a hen. You shall bring close as to pleasing aromas to Hashem. And when you will proceed, process a young bull into a burnt offering of a sacrifice to express a vow or some peace offering to Hashem, then he shall bring close with the young bull a meal offering, three tenths of a fine flour mixed with a half a hen of oil. And the wine you shall bring close to the libation, a half a hen, a fire offering, a pleasing aroma to Hashem. Such shall it be done for one ox, for one ram, or for a yearling, or for a sheep of the goats, 
according to the number that you will do. Such shall you do with each one according to their number. Every citizen of Israel shall do such as these to bring close a fire offering a pleasing aroma to Hashem. And when there will reside with you a convert, a person who is in your midst for your generations, and he will make a fire offering a pleasing aroma to Hashem, as you will do, so he shall do. So, from the very beginning of our people, people have been converting into Judaism. We've always had converts. We've always accepted converts. Once a convert converts once a person who comes to convert has converted he or she is to be viewed as any other jew no distinction is made between the born jew and the convert and incidentally a convert should never go around telling people i'm a jew by choice i'm a convert that believe it or not is a violation of holika once you convert you are a jew and you accept the fact that at a soul level, you've always been a Jew. Yeah, for a while you were in a Gentile body, but you're a Jew. You've always been a Jew since Mount Sinai. So when the Gentile comes to convert, once he converts, he or she is fully Jewish. 15. The assembly, for the assembly, there will be one statute for you, the born Jew, and for the one who converts, who resides among you as an eternal statute for all of your generations, like you shall be the convert before Hashem. One teaching and one law shall be for you and for the convert who resides with you. Upon entry into the land, which is 40 years hence at this point, upon your entry into the land to which I am bringing you, that will be the law, no distinction. And it will be when you eat of the bread of the land that you shall separate a raised offering for Hashem. The first of your doughs is called a challah. This is where we get the word challah for Sabbath bread. The first of the dough is actually the challah. You are to take a piece of that and you burn it separately. You get rid of it in various ways. You shall separate this to be a raised offering. Like a raised offering of the granary shall you separate it. From the first of your doughs, you shall give to Hashem a raised offering for your generations. Because the temple is not standing and because we do not have the tent of meeting today, we do this symbolically by just taking a small piece of the bread. But in the day, a substantial offering was made to God, and that was passed on to the Levites for their food. When we remove a little piece today, we're doing this symbolically. Because we can't make sacrifices in the absence of the temple. 22. And when you will err. So God knows you're going to make mistakes. He knows that it's right in the Torah, not if you err but when you err. And you will not do all these commandments that Hashem spoke to Moshe, all of that which Hashem has commanded you to do by the authority of Moshe Rabbeinu from the day that Hashem commanded you and thereafter throughout all of your generations. And it will be if from the eyes of the congregation it was done inadvertently then all the congregation shall process one young bull for a burnt offering, for a pleasing aroma to Hashem. And its meal offering and its libation, as is appropriate for one yearling, a he goat, for a sin offering. Again, in the absence of the temple, we can't do these things. So once a year on Yom Kippur, we symbolically go before Hashem as a community and say that as a community, we have sinned. When we are, <coughs> excuse me. When we get to that time of year again, you'll notice in some of the special prayers that we do, we don't say, I have sinned, I have lied, I have done these things. We say, we have sinned, we have lied, we have committed murder, we have all the evils. 
This is a community because we want the community of Jews to be blessed, not just me, not just you. So the community comes together to do a communal repentance. This is what we do on Yom Kippur. And this is why more than any other day of the year, Jews go to shul on Yom Kippur. Collectively, we want God's blessing. I may not deserve it, but collectively, because of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, hopefully we do. 25. So the priest, which would now be the Kohen Gadol in the temple, except we don't have a temple, so we don't have a Kohen Gadol. And the priest shall atone for all the congregation of the children of Israel, and it would be forgiven them. For it was an inadvertent sin and brought their offerings, a fire offering before Hashem and a sin offering before Hashem for their inadvertent sin. <clears throat> so on Yom Kippur, we are asking God to forgive the in, unintentional sins of our people. How about the intentional sins? Intentional sins, you got to deal with. That's why we will have the month of Elul, a full month to prepare ourselves for Yom Kippur. A full month to think about what we've done wrong, to make our apologies, to make our, rest, uh, our uh, restorations of our relationships, our restitutions for our sins. A full month. Then we get to Rosh Hashanah, and we thank God for the sound of the, of the shofar. And as we sound the shofar, it is our innermost beings crying out to God. Then we have the 10 days of awe. 10 days to finalize our repentance for any intentional or knowing sins that we did to make ourselves the rectification. Then on Yom Kippur, when our unintentional sins are forgiven, then if we have been sincere as the evening ends and our fast ends and we eat communal dinners, if you're in a physical shul, then you know you have been forgiven of all of your sins. And you stand as a newborn child before Hashem, and you have the opportunity to do better next year. 26. And it will be forgiven for all the congregation of the children of Israel and for the convert who resides in their midst. Because for the entire nation, it was an inadvertent sin. And if one soul will sin inadvertently, then it shall bring a young female goat and a sin offering. And then the priest shall atone for it, the erring soul, when it sinned inadvertently before Hashem to atone for him, for him, not them. And it shall be forgiven him. Then the citizen of the children of Israel and the convert who resides in their midst, there shall be one teaching for both, for one who acts inadvertently. We do this hopefully every single day when we do hit butter do. Every day you should do hit butter do. Every day you should spend time before God and you should say, did I offend anybody today? Did I commit a sin today? If I did, Hashem, forgive me. I'm sorry I did that. If I can, I'll make restitution for what I've done every single day. And then on Rosh Chodesh, the new moon day, which is coming up, the new moon day, make a special prayer to God, asking him to forgive you and to make you able to forgive yourself so that every day and every month we are preparing for the month of Elul, for Rosh Hashanah and for Yom Kippur, so that we not be held accountable for our sins. 30. And the soul that will act publicly of the citizens or the converts, and he blasphemes Hashem, that soul shall be severed from the midst of the nation. It's one thing to make a mistake. It's another thing to publicly go out in D.C. and boast we like killing Jewish babies. It's another thing to go out publicly and say we support the idea that everybody should be confused about their gender. We support all the evils in our society. That's a different matter. Hashem says, I will sever that soul from the midst of the nation. Again, does that mean that the soul will be destroyed? I don't think so. I think it means that a righteous congregation is going to say, you're not welcome here. You are supporting evil. We don't want you in our midst. We don't want you in our holy assemblies because you're not holy. Only God can decide what he's going to do with the Mashallah. 
You can't and I can't, but we can decide who we want to associate with. 31, for the, for the word of Hashem, he disgraced publicly and his commandment he broke and that soul will surely be severed because of its iniquity that it has done. And the children of Israel were in the wilderness and they discovered a man there who is gathering wood on the Sabbath day. Now, this is where we get the teaching about not using electricity and fire and that type of thing on Shabbat. This has been highly debated and redone, in my opinion, by the rabbis. But what this man did is he went out and cut wood on Shabbat. Why did he cut wood? Probably to make a fire, maybe to make a house, but probably or a hut, but probably to make a fire. And based on that, the rabbis have said, you cannot start a fire on Shabbat. This is where it comes from. Children of Israel were in the wilderness and they discovered a man who was gathering wood on the Sabbath day. And they did not at this point have a law concerning that, but they knew it was wrong. So they brought him close, uh, those who discovered this, him gathering the wood, to Moses and to Aharon and before all the congregation. And they left him there in a guarded place because it had not yet been specified what should be done to him. They knew you shouldn't do it, cutting the wood on the Sabbath day, but they didn't have a ruling about it. So they go to Hashem. Hashem, verse 35, speaks to Moshe and he says, that man will surely be executed. Bombarding him with stone, stone him to death. All the congregation will stone him outside of the camp to death. So they took him out of the congregation outside the camp, and they bombarded him with stones. They stoned him to death, and he died, as Hashem had commanded Moshe. It's a long cry from saying that has something to do with even lighting a fire, let alone turning on a light bulb. But this is where it comes from. 37. And Hashem said to Moshe, speak to the children of Israel and say to them that they shall not make for themselves I'm sorry, that they shall make for themselves sit sit on the corners of their garments for all their generations. They are to put the sit sit on the corner with tehalet, twined thread. What is tehalet? Some translations call tehalet blue, but we don't actually know what color it is. Here in the Arot Chumash, they call it blue-green woolen. That's how this one calls it. The footnote says that wool is dyed with the blood of a specific snail to a blue-green color. Homolytically, Ribi Moshe Huddershon, the expositor, taught us that Tehalet symbolizes the eradication of the Egyptian firstborn uh, for the Torah root uh, of the children. There's a big thing on there. I'm not going to go into that, actually. But um, what we don't know for certain what Tehalet is. There is opinion that it came from this certain type of a snail, but we don't actually know that. We thought that snail, however, was extinct. For all these many, many thousands of years until it was discovered, I think, in the 1960s in Israel. Prior to that, in the 50s, they discovered another animal they thought might be the animal. We still, to this day, do not know. And so the rabbis have always ruled, since we do not know what Tehalet is, it is best if our tzitzit simply be white without a string of bluish green. Others, by the way, say bluish purple. <clears throat> since we don't know what Tehalet is, we do not observe this. The sages all agree that whatever Tehalet is, it will be restored in the kingdom to come. We'll all then know what Tehalet is, and we will all add Tehalet to our tzitzit at that time. So until then, it's like playing music in the synagogue on Shabbat. We don't do it because we are mourning the loss of the temple. In the same way, we don't wear Tehalet because we do not know for sure what Tehalet is, and we are mourning the loss of our own purity. 
some Jews are sometimes seen wearing a thing which they believe to be Tehillah. But I'm telling you, if most Jews see you wearing Tehillah, they're going to assume you're a Messianic. Um, also, the command is to put the tzitzit on the corners of your garments. If you have your tzitzit on your belt loops, they're going to know you're a Messianic. No Jew would ever do that. Tehillah goes on the four corners of a piece of a square or rectangular garment, such as this. They do not go on belt loops, God forbid. And we do not know what color Tehillah is. So we acknowledge that by only having white tzitzit, and we look forward to the day when Hashem will restore Tehillah to us. And you shall recall all the commandments of Hashem, and you will do them. And you shall not espy after your heart and after your eyes, which might cause you to stray, so that you should recall now all of my commandments. You shall be holy to your God. I am Hashem, your God, who took you out of Mitzrayim to be your God out of the land of Egypt. So you will recognize that last bit from the Siddur as well. We are called to be humble. We are called to acknowledge what we know and what we do not know. Amen. Blessed are you, Hashem, our God, King of the universe, who gave to us your Torah, the Torah of truth, who implanted eternal life within our hearts, Rukata Adonai, giver of the Torah of truth. We are grateful to you, Hashem, for you have given to us the Torah of truth. Page 381. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who chose good prophets. Who is pleased with their words, which are spoken in truth. Rukata Adonai, who chose the Torah of Moshe, his servant, and Israel, his people, and prophets of truth and of righteousness. Our Haftarah this week is Joshua chapter 2, verses 1 to 24, page 215, if you have the other Chumash. And Yehoshua, a son of Nun, sent from Shittim two men to spies of thought, saying, go see the land and the Yedekho, Jericho. And they went, and they came to the house of a wayward woman. Her name was Rechav, and there they lay down. So this is the story of the spy. This is not the story of spies we just read. This is another case. They're getting ready for the war of Yedekho, and they're going to spy out the land. Two of them go down, and they meet Rechav, who tradition tells us was a loose woman, a prostitute, if you would, too. And it was said to the king of Yedeko, saying, Behold, men came in tonight from the children of Israel to spy out our land. And the king of Yedeko sent to Rahab, saying, Take out these men who have come to you, who came into your house, to espy this land. Before to despy our land they have come. And so this woman, Rechav, took the two men, and she hid them on her roof. And she said to them, ye men of Israel, come to me. But I did not know where they were. These two men did come to me, but I did not know where they were from. And it was at the time the gates were being closed at dark when the men and the men must have gone out. I do not know to where the men went. Chase quickly after them, for perhaps you will apprehend them. In other words, yeah, there were these men who came into me. The guards were right. But right about dark time when the gates were getting ready to close, they left real quick and they left through the gates. And I don't know where they went. But if you're hurrying, maybe you can catch her. She's lying. Six. And she brought the spies up to the roof. And there she hid them within the flat stalks, which were arranged for, for her on her roof. In Israel, most of the roofs are flat. and the rooftop is a living space, and they use it for various purposes. 
and the Yetiko men chased after them along the way along the Yarden River to the passes that they might have gone after the gate was closed, following them. And they, the spies, before they lay down, Rahav came up to them on the roof. And Rahav said to the men, look, I know that Hashem has given you this land and the dread of you has fallen upon us. And they have melted all of the other inhabitants of the land before you. In other words, I know your God is all powerful and he's going to take over my land. I'm aware of that. I'm not, I'm not naive. We've heard that which Hashem has done when he dried the waters of the Sea of Reeds from before you, when you went out of Egypt. And we know what you did to those two Amorite kings when you were across the Yardim River to Sikon and to Og, how you destroyed them. And we have heard and our hearts have melted. Our spirit to fight no longer rises in any of the men here before you. Because Hashem, your God, he is the God of the heavens above and of the earth below. Now, it's interesting that this particular Haftarah references what Moses said to, uh, to Hashem. He said, your reputation precedes you. Do not spoil your reputation by killing these people. This would not have happened had Hashem not recanted and saved the people of Israel. 12. And now swear to me by Hashem. For I have performed a kindness for you, and you also should perform with the house of my father a kindness, and you should give me a true sign, and you should let live my father and my mother and my brothers and my sisters and all that belong to them, all the souls that be rescued from death. In other words, I know you guys are going to win, and I don't want my family to die with these idiots. And so the men said to her, our souls are in your place to die. If you will not tell this word of ours, and it will be that when Hashem gives us this land, that we will do with you kindness and truth. In other words, help us survive now, and we will help you survive later. So she lowered them with a rope by the window because her house was located on the walls of the fortification. In other words, her house was on the wall of the city. So they went out through a window or from the roof down so they could escape, even though the wall of the city was closed off. <coughs> and she said to them, now go to the mountain and let the pursuers meet up with you. And you should hide there. Lest the pursuers meet up with you, you should hide there. And for a three-day period until the pursuers return. And afterwards, you should go on your way. So Hashem seems to have been speaking through this prostitute, saying, this is what you should do. Go up there and then hide for three days, then go on, lest the pursuers find you. That was probably the word of Hashem being spoken through the mouth of this prostitute. And the men said to her, we are exonerated of this oath of yours, which you made us swear. Behold, when we enter the land, this cord of red thread you're going to tie here on the window of your house through which you lowered us and your father and your mother and your siblings and all of the house of your father are to gather to you to this house and it will be that whoever exits from the doors of your house they <laughs> page stick together uh, though, whoever leaves your house and goes outside, his blood will be on his own hands. We will be exonerated. But whoever will be together with you in this house, his blood will be on our head if a single hand should come upon him. And if you will tell this word of ours, then we will be exonerated from our oath, which you made us swear. So if you tell your people where we are, we're exonerated, you're going to die. If you tell your people, however, to come into your house and stay there while the battle is raging, I promise you my people will not touch a, head of the, a single person inside of your house. But if they leave the house, then it's, up, then it's on them. We're not going to look through the city trying to find a relative. 21. So she said to him, per your words 
so it is. As you have spoken, so is it. And so she sent them away and they went and she tried, she tied a red cord on her window. By the way, this idea of a red cord is sort of like a red light bulb in Amsterdam and places. This red cord also signified that she was a prostitute. That's how people could find the prostitutes. You look for the red cord. That's why she had a red cord. But the red cord really would not nor even hang out of a window. And so they went and they came to the mountain and they stayed there for three days until the pursuers returned. And the pursuers sought them along the entire way, but they did not find the spies. And the two men then returned and they descended down the mountain and they crossed the yard then and they came to Yehoshua, the son of Nun, and they told everything to him, all that had happened. And they said to Yehoshua, for Hashem has given the land into our hand, this entire land, and also they had melted out all the inhabitants of the land before us. <clears throat> and of course, he also told them not to kill the women or the people of the woman's house. As we find later in the story when the attack actually happens. We're on page 381 in our Sephardic Shadur, La Veliezer. Our Redeemer, Adonai of Host is his name, the Holy One of Israel. Brukata Adonai, King of the universe, rock of all the worlds, righteous in all generations, the Almighty, the faithful one, the one who does and who says, who fulfills, for all of his words are true and right. You, Adonai, are dependable, our God. Dependable are all of your words, and not a single one of your words will ever be retracted unfulfilled, because you are the Almighty. You are the King who is dependable. Brukata Adonai, the Almighty, who is dependable in all of his words. Have compassion, Adonai, upon Zion, as fallen as it is. For Zion is the home of our life. It is Zion whose soul continues to be humiliated. Deliver Zion speedily in our day. Brukata Adonai, who causes Zion to rejoice with her children. Cause us to rejoice, Adonai, our God, with Eliyahu, the prophet, your servant, with the kingdom of the house of David, your anointed, speedily may he come soon and may cause our hearts to rejoice. May no stranger sit upon his throne. May others no longer inherit his glory. Because you swore to him, Adonai, by your holy name, that his light would never be extinguished. Rugata Adonai, the shield of David. And so, Adonai, for the Torah, for this divine service, for the prophets, for this Shabbat day, which you've given to us, Adonai, our God, for wholeness and for rest, for honor and for glory, for all of this, Adonai, our God, we give thanks to you and we bless you. Blessed be your name by the mouth of all the living continually forever. Rugata Adonai, who sanctifies HaShabbat. Thank you, Hashem. We praise you. We are grateful to you because you are God, because you save our people. And you are with our people. And we thank you, Hashem, for the overturning of Roe v. Wade. And we ask you, Adonai, to please protect the justices from the death cult that is now seeking to kill them. Protect the churches and the synagogues and the, the women's centers and all the places where people are fighting for life for the children, Adonai. Protect them all. May everyone be safe who stands for life. And may the evil ones be held accountable, we pray. Thank you, Hashem. Light of our Torah today is a little bit different. It's called the Sadakim Live Forever. For this <clears throat> Devar Torah, I have borrowed freely from Rav Berlin the holy Sadiq, the rabbi of our dear rabbi, Shalom Arush. Rev. Berlin teaches us something here that is vitally important to know from this Parsha. In this Parsha, Parsha Shilak, all of the Israelites heard the prophecy that Moshe Rabbeinu would die. The people loved the great leader, and they wept bitterly at the thought that he would leave them. And all the people who were panicking some of them were trembling from fright, and everyone was sobbing. 
And they said, if we enter into the land, then Moshe is going to die. Maybe we should stay here rather than going in the land so Moshe can live. That was the mindset at the time. Rav Natan, Rabbi Nachman of Breslov's closest disciple, explained that the controversy between the spies and Yehoshua bin Nun boiled down to this. In effect, the spies said, we love our Moshe Rabbeinu. We want Moshe Rabbeinu to stay alive. We don't want to part from him. And therefore, they determined that if entering the Holy Land would result in his death, they'd rather forego the Holy Land. Now, this is all based largely on the Midrash. They were prepared, nonetheless, to continue wandering in the desert as nomads in order to spare the life of their dear leader and spiritual father. Their intentions were therefore good on one level. In their minds, they were trying to remain loyal to their beloved Rebbe. Very good, we might think. However, we must always bend the knee to Hashem and his will, no matter how difficult that may be for us. This they failed to do because their amuna was lacking. And so despite the best intentions that they may have had, they actually found themselves opposing the will of Hashem. And in the end, they died for it. The Adi HaKodesh says in Shar HaPasukim that on Parsha Shilach, that this was a terrible, there was a terrible argument between the spies and Yehoshua. This was because of the lack of Amuna that the spies had. And because of their lack of Amuna, they foolishly insulted Yehoshua bin Nun, who was the anointed of Hashem at this time. They accursed him. They said, don't lie to us. You heard the prophecy that Moshe was going to die, and yet you insist that we should enter the land in this place? It is this reason, arguably, that you want to enter Eretz Israel so that you can become the Rebbe and that our Rebbe will die and you will replace him. Such a terrible accusation. Can you imagine that? There was no one more devoted to Moshe Rabbeinu than Yehoshua. This is what they accused Yehoshua of, according to the Midrash. Can you imagine? You want your rabbi to die because you want to inherit his authority. You want to be the leader. Such a evil thought. But here's the reply of Yehoshua. Yehoshua said, Moshe is alive. Moshe is chai v'chaim. He is alive and is ever present in the world. Do you not understand yet that there is no such thing as Moshe dying. Moshe can't die, ever. Because Moshe lives through Torah. Yehoshua bin Nun then explained to the spies that Moshe Rabbeinu will live on forever despite his physical death, and that through his word and through his teachings that come from Hashem, Moshe will be the leader of the Jewish people forever. Because everything that Jews do is supposed to be based upon the Torah of Moshe Rabbeinu. But the spies and the rest of the people didn't understand this vital truth. They were judging only by their physical eyes rather than their spiritual eyes. My friends, understand this well. Your soul is eternal. While it is true that we will all pass from these physical forms eventually, from this incarnation, we will end, but our soul is eternal and it is undying. And even in this life, just see how we have changed. Most of us can no longer run along the sands of a beach or climb the trees like we once did when we were young. No, now we have changed. We have learned, however, and developed so in so many ways so that we can use these bodies still. And one day, 
we will again be able to keep up with the child. As we continue, Lador Vador. The only constant in life, my friends, is change. Death is merely a changing from one form to another form. Death is not the end. There is no reason to fear death. And many of us may very well die as martyrs. And if that is what God calls for us to do, Baruch Hashem. What a glorious opportunity. We don't seek out martyrdom. But if Hashem brings it upon us, Baruch Hashem. A soul who achieves a high level of devakut or attachment to the beloved can never lose that attachment. It travels with the soul from one life to another. And even when such a sadik may abandon his or her body by choice, by violence, or by old age, no, in reality, there is no death. Death is merely the soul changing its costumes for the next scene. The Sadikim are Chai Vechayam. They are alive and they're ever present in this world. But the spies didn't believe that Rebbe, that uh, Moshe Rabbeinu was immortal. That his words and that his leadership for Chai Vechayim, that it would not last, that it would last and endure. They didn't believe that because they had no Amuna. That was their failing. They did not grasp the Moshe Rabbeinu could be revealed in each and every person at every moment because he has achieved such a great love and such a great level of devakut that the words which God gave him could speak within our souls and that he was greater than anyone who came before or after him. Moshe Rabbeinu is our eternal teacher. His teaching is Torah. His Torah is within our consciousness. And it can never be taken, no matter what evil men do to us. But because they wanted Rebbe to stay alive physically, because they wanted the body of Moshe Rabbeinu to stay with them, they had to try to keep him corporeal. And so they made the whole matter about Moses materialistic. They turned Moshe Rabbeinu into an idol, into a failing body, rather than a limitless eternal soul, which is what the Torah is. But let Kalev be our example. Kalev avoided the debating and the finger pointing. He sought to understand the truth of what was happening. And it is for this reason, as Rav Natan explained, that the truth was revealed to him at the cave of Machpelah, at the cave of the patriarchs. Those people who achieved Devachut are not bound by time or space. They are not bound by physical locations of their bodies. People who attain Devakut are eternally free, even now, because they have now tasted the fruit of the Olam Haba. <clears throat> Many people say they believe in God, but only those who have attained to Devakut know God. And the Sadakim who have attained Devakut are free. And they live in and throughout eternity. They are undying. Attaching yourself to such a, attaching oneself to such a Sadik, such a Sadik, for instance, as our beloved Rebbe Nachman of Breslov, that is the way of wisdom. That is the way of peace. And that is the way of eternal life. And these are the words of the spiritual master, of our spiritual master, Rabbi Rebbe Shalom Arush. This knowledge empowers. This knowledge maintains our very existence. Because of a fact, we are eternal beings. Because we are the children of the eternal being created in his image. God doesn't die. And we don't die, but we do change our clothes periodically. But the day is coming when even that will stop.
Once we're in the Olam Haba, death will be no more. We will dwell in joy, in peace, in health, and in well-being with the beloved. May that day come soon. And may all the people of Beta Muna say to that, Amen. Amen. We are on page 385 of our Siddur. A good reputation is better than good oil. And the day of a person's death, in some ways, is better than the day they were born. In the final analysis, once everything has been heard, the conclusion of the matter is, fear God, have awe of God, and heed his commandments. That is the lot of mankind. All of our achievements, our accomplishments, our power, our wealth, our fame, our beauty, all of these things are fleeting away as sand through the hourglass. But the soul never dies. The soul is eternal. And the fulfillment of the soul is to achieve devakut with the beloved. The pious will rejoice in honor. They will sing joyously upon their beds and Gan Eden. And we pray, may he who has mercy upon all creatures, who has forbearance and compassion and mercy on all Neshamot, may he have mercy upon the life force and the eternal spirit of the 63 million children who have been murdered since 1973, under Roe v. Wade, 63 million human beings. Let that sink in. 63 million innocent children slaughtered since 1973 in the United States. May Hashem be merciful to their souls and their spirits. May he give them peace. We mourn their loss. And we thank Hashem from the bottom of our hearts for the overturning of this monstrous ruling that for 50 years has legalized the slaughter of innocent children. But it's not over yet. It only sent it back to the states. Several states have already instantly enacted laws protecting life. Most states have not. The battle continues. May Hashem protect the children of the world, the children of our country. May the godly spirit rest upon these 63 million innocent children in Gan Eden. May they, along with the children of Israel, rest together and know mercy and peace and forgiveness may it be so willed and may we say amen the amen hashem <clears throat> we repent we beg your forgiveness but how do you ask forgiveness for the slaughter of 63 million people hitler couldn't come close to that 63 million people. The Ruk Hashem Roe v. Wade has been overturned, but the battle continues. And if you'd like to join the battle, I encourage you to go to the Jewish Pro Life Foundation, JewishProLifeFoundation.org, and offer to help however you can. Support our ministry here. Because as people wake up spiritually, they typically become pro-life. 
as people begin to understand the sanctity of God, they begin to understand the sanctity of human life. I'm available to speak. Cecily Routman is available to speak. We will speak. We will work. We will do whatever we can to save lives. So please support us in this. The Jewish Pro-Life Foundation and Betamuna.org, Betamuna LLC. Your donations are tax deductible if you're a person that, that is applicable to. But help us save lives. Even as we rejoice, rejoice over the overturning of Roe v. Wade. We now turn to page 386 as far as our place in the book, although we don't read that directly. <clears throat> May the one who blessed our father, Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, and our mother, Sarah, Rebecca, Raquel, and Leah, Continue to bless those we now bring before you and before your holy Torah. May you bless them. May you heal them, all who are injured, ill, or sick of heart. May you protect them, all who are in the war zone, those who are in the wombs of women who want to kill their own children. May God protect life. And may the Holy One of Blessing be filled with compassion for all these people. May he restore them. May he protect them. May he heal them, strengthen and enliven them, speedily send them complete healing, healings <clears throat> of soul and healings of body among all those who are stricken of Israel and those who stand with us. Speedily, soon, and without delay, we pray. And the people said, Amen, but Amen. Does anyone have a Misha Barrett request that you would like to share? If you are on YouTube, I invite you to write it in the chat screen. If you are on Zoom, I invite you to open your mics and speak these names. Be careful not to give personal information, though, because we are public here. Amber Brewer, Faye Franey, and Jeff Hubbard. Amen. Anyone else? David, Ben, Sarah. Gabi Bat Sarah and Shmuel Ben David. May Hashem be merciful upon these three people. Anyone else? Oh, Rabbi, it's Cecily. How about for Devlin McDermott? Can you speak a little bit more clearly? Oh, yes. Uh, Devlin. How about a, a prayer for Devlin? I mean, Devlin for sure. Yeah, our friend Devlin. Uh, we pray that Hashem would give her clarity of sight that he would give her physical healing, that he would bless Devlin, a woman who loves God and needs direction, as we all do. We pray for Devlin for certain. Thank you, Cecily. Anyone else? We also pray for the following people who are on our Misha Barrett list. Uh, we ask that, um, that Hashem should bless these people as well as people who should be on the list we don't know about. We pray for healings for Addison Chambers, Alana Sharp, Alice Bailey, Alan Margolis, Andre Rivenel, Angie Beavers, Barbara McMahon, Rabbi, uh, my mom, Betty Bot Ali, Bill Trant, Bill Williams, Buddy Robinson, Carol and George St. George, Carolyn Brady Renault, who has a broken wrist, among a lot of other problems, as she struggles to take care of her disabled husband, Carolyn Belcher and family, Carolyn White, Cecil Bott Devora, and Tom Kimmerley, the Jewish Pro Life Foundation, who, by the way, are at least partially to thank for this victory, Hannah Bela Bot Inez, Hannah Zela, Charles and Patricia Houston, Charles Mathis, Charlotte Generally, Chelsea Kreider, <clears throat> uh, Christopher Matthews, Daniel Ben Florence, Darlene Brooks, David Ben Sarah, David Reimer, David Sweat or Sweet, Deborah Opal, Denise Black, Denislava Poloski, and her fiance Samuel Dubowski. 
uh, they can reunite in Bulgaria and that they both have peace and well being. Donna Bot Evelyn, Dwight Mishner, Eddie Real, Eliana Simka Bot Esler, Evelyn Sill, Frank Rotowski and family, Gavi Bot Sarah, Ian Lyman, James Higgins, Jan, Jan Wayne Boutro, Joe Hazel, Joseph Stanley, Joyce Woods, Julie Curtis, our friend Kaylee, who is waiting for brain surgery, Carlene Renewn, Kelly Wilson, who has foot issues, Kenneth Hamilton, Leah Bach Sarah, Leona Danner and family, Lillian Bach Levine Adeline, Ahuba's mom, Lynette Bach Phyllis, Mary DeHart, Mary Tarwick, Miriam and Peter Fogler, Miriam Jacob, Patty Boutro, Rabbi Dr. Bernard Rosenberg, Randall Beaver, still recovering from surgery and who's trying to get the money up to buy a, a new computer so he can start coming to services again. Roger or Tally uh, and Lisa Simmons, who are Frank Bertoski's, Lisa Frank's daughter. Sarah Mosky, uh, who is having pregnancy problems. Uh, Sarah has a number of children. Most of them are under like 11, I think it is. And the pregnancy problems that she's currently having are very serious. So Pete, please be in prayer for Sarah Mosky, for Shirley Bridal, for Stephen Trent and family, for Tara Lopez, for my neighbor Tiffany Grimes with cancer throughout her body, for Timothy Ben Evelyn, for the people and citizens of Oman and its holy places, especially those who are around the top, the cover, the burial place of our beloved Rabbi Nachman of Breslov. May the war stay out of Uman and may the war stay away from Rebbe's Kever. Van Bailey, Vicki Mathis, Victoria Lauger, uh, uh, Chelsea's friend Wyatt and his ongoing cancer treatment. 14 year old kid shouldn't have to deal with cancer, but little Wyatt is. May God bless Wyatt. Yako Ben Raquel Rizel, Yael Ben Sarah Imanu, Yair Black, Yehuda Ben Tav, Yvette Nechlug, and Dr. Zev Zelenko, who keeps having new problems, physical problems developing, and uh, as well as uh, physical uh, uh, threats on his safety. May God bless Dr. Zev Zelenko. Also, Patricia Swords, who's in need of help with her pump house so that, that they quickly be repaired. And Patricia Swords, who is having issues with her pump house, that it needs to be very quickly restored. Um, Amen. Um, part of my reading had a reference to Isaiah 55. Ho, oh, all of you are thirsty, come to water. Amen. Um, yeah, there it is. I see that. Uh, thank you, Ahuba. Uh, we, we certainly want to pray for Patricia Swords and her pump house as well. And we turn now to Hashem for these and all the other myriad needs. In the words of Debbie Friedman. May the source of strength <clears throat> who bless the ones before us help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing. And let us say Amen. Misha Behera Imoteu, Mikor Habrakaham Yaboteu. Bless those in need of healing with the Fuar Shlema, the renewal of body, the renewal of spirit. And let us say, Amen. Also, special prayers <clears throat> for Chelsea and for David Reimer that they be granted the wisdom to make the appropriate decisions for their futures, that Hashem would guide them both, would bless them both in the ways that are best for both of them. And may God protect David Reimer um, in Ukraine and wherever else he may find himself. 
May Hashem be kind to those people we have named and those people who need our prayers that we have not named. <clears throat> On our Simca list, yesterday, the 24th of June, <clears throat> was not only a day of incredible accomplishment for Chief Justice Clarence Thomas, a true defender of life, a true defender of the First and Second Amendments, but it was also his birthday. The Chief Justice just turned 74 years of age. He is from Pinpoint, Georgia, not so far from me, a little more south. Of course, in Georgia, everything is south of here because we're on the Tennessee border. <clears throat> but happy birthday to Judge Clarence Thomas, who met one of the things that he always dreamed of accomplishing as a court judge, the overturning of Roe v. Wade. And on that score, Roe v. Wade has been overturned. Baruch Hashem. What better Simka could there be? Well, actually, there could be a better Simka. My personal opinion, I'm thrilled with Judge Clarence Thomas and the others, but they actually passed the buck. The United States Constitution guarantees us all life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. What the court should have done <clears throat> they should have said this is a constitutional issue. Instead, they said it's not. It is a constitutional issue. The Constitution guarantees us the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. If they kill you, you have none of those three things. <clears throat> so as we're celebrating the overthrow of that horrible, horrible 1973 decision, we do so with somewhat jaded excitement. Because the battle goes on. I think it's 14 states so far that have enacted <clears throat> uh, pro-life legislation. The majority of the country is not. Some places like New York has, in fact, legalized abortion all the way up to birth. You can be in labor and say, I changed my mind. And they can kill the baby in New York. And probably California, I haven't checked there. <clears throat> so the battle is far from over, but we have to take our victories wherever we can find them, and we had a wonderful one yesterday with Roe v. Wade being overturned. We pray to Hashem that innocent churches and individuals and clinics will be protected by the Holy Spirit of God, by the Ruach HaKodesh, as evil death cultists try to kill people, the justices, the abortion information workers, the churches that stand for life. <laughs> I wish I could say the synagogues, but we're one of the few that I know of, and there are others. But, but the synagogues that are standing for life, may God protect the rabbis, the pastors, the priests, the monks, the people, congregants, 
and the battle continues. And again, if you want to join that battle, contact Cecily Routman, who is one of our members, I'm honored to say. And I'm honored to say also that I'm a board member of her organization. Contact Cecily and let her know what you can do to help save children. And Baruch Hashem, such as Simka, I never thought, I never thought I would be able to say Roe v. Wade had been overturned. And I know that's true for a lot of you as well. <clears throat> also, on the 28th, it is George St. George's birthday. That is Carol St. George's husband. The 29th is Bill Stevens' birthday. That is Carol St. George's brother. And last night, I asked if anyone had another birthday. We were inundated by birthdays, but I couldn't write it down because it's Shabbat. Would anyone care to share a birthday that you have coming up? I know there's a lot of them. I, I have one on July 7th. July 7th. Anybody else? Those of you who have birthdays, like I said, last night, I was just sitting here amazed as people go, well, I have one. My neighbor has one. My wife has one. My kids have one. Um, be sure you let us know so we can wish you a happy birthday. Either do that by writing me or by writing um, Shoshi Randall's at her Facebook page. If you have already told me, let remind me because my memory is not what it never was. Remind me after Shabbat so I can make sure we get it on our list just in case it's not. Um, also, any other happy things that have happened to you this week? <clears throat> what are you happy about this week? What are you joyous about this week? What are you sh shouting to God your happiness about? didn't have to be religious. What good things are happening to you that you're happy about? Well, I know we all have a lot of things we're happy about. People may be a little bit shy to talk about them on the internet, but there's a lot of goodness going around and we are absolutely thrilled. For Judge Clarence Thomas, for Lisa Franny, <clears throat> for uh, George St. George and for Bill Stevens, we sing Happy Birthday. Yom Haled It Sameach, Yom Haled It Sameach, Yom Haled It Sameach, Yom Haled It Sameach, to 150. 20, I cheated. 120. Oh, I, I was thinking I, there was another birthday that I could think of. And that's what sort of threw me off there. It's also um, the birthday of Chelsea's um, son, Lucas. It's also his sixth birthday, uh, just barely passed. So happy birthday to Lucas as well, if you are out there with us. Um, we wish you all great joy and happiness um, this Shabbat and every Shabbat. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God cause his face to shine upon you. Enjoy good things as they happen. Because there's a lot of good in life. It's so easy to get caught up in all the bad. There are joyous things that happen. And we are celebrating this weekend. And unfortunately, the death cult is not. So especially if you're near a city, be very careful. The, the expected attacks last night apparently were sort of a dud because um, I don't think hardly anything happened um, last night. There a little bit, but not much. Uh, there was a clinic in Asheville that got attacked, I know. But, um, but do be careful for the next week or so especially um, because, you know, the death cult is reacting negatively and it's likely to get worse before it gets better. So please stay safe. And may God bless all of the pregnancy uh, centers helping women with their choices. And may Hashem bless all the women who are currently pregnant and who are debating what to do. May Hashem show them how they can give birth. And if you are a pregnant woman uncertain of what to do, I invite you to contact Cecily and make her work harder because she's already back. But Cecily and the Jewish Pro-Life Foundation can advise you 
in your alternatives. And you have a lot of alternatives. And uh, Cecily can help you with those. Visit the Jewish Pro Life Foundation.org. Uh, does anybody else have a Misha Barrick or a prayer for people that you would like to share right now? There's so much happening this week, and I'm sure I've missed some of these things. Anyone? I want to add my niece in there. Her name is Christine Addis. I mean, birthday or what's with her? Just praying for her epilepsy. Okay. I mean, the Hashim healer. Anyone else? Uh, do we have, uh, have we, are we going to do the um, yard sites yet? We have already done those. Oh, sorry, I missed it. We're not able to do full yard sites here because we don't have a minion, but we did the Hashka bolt. Uh, is there a yard site that you would care to mention? Ellen Schomburg's uh, yes. past, but we remember Ellen Schomburg for sure. Yeah. Um, uh, Tuesday will be my father's yard site, William Houston. William Houston. Amen. May his, may, may, the, may a godly spirit rest upon, what's his name again? What did you say his name was, Charles? William. William. W-I-L-L-I-A-M, William. Uh, may, may a godly spirit rest upon William Houston in Gan Eden and those with the children of Israel. May he be blessed. And may we say, Amen, but Amen. Um, do we have any other announcements for anybody? And again, you're all welcome to either write me or write Shoshi. It's better to write Shoshi if you know her. But let one of us know your yard sites, your birthdays, uh, and that sort of thing. So we can get them on our list. We want to celebrate or commiserate with you or remember your loved ones. Anyone else? Thank you, Charles. So we're in the bottom of page 387. Uh, we just got evidence that despite the corruption and the bad things, there are still people in our government who are more or less good people who are trying to do what is right, who are trying to stand for life. For these people, we are thankful. And for these people, we ask that God should bless them and that God should protect them, um, especially our Supreme Court members who, um, well, I think it was Judge Thomas, actually, that someone went in and literally tried to kill. Uh, luckily, that didn't work. But we know that all the justices were threatened, all the legitimate justices were threatened. Um, and so we know they're there. And so we pray for our Supreme Court justices. We pray for people like, um, like Ms. Green here in my district in Georgia. We pray for people like, like Governor DeSantis in Florida. We pray for all the people in our government who are working to try to restore our country to godly, uh, godly principles before it's too late. So for all of these people, we say, may he who grants deliverance to kings and dominion to princes, whose kingship is a kingship over all worlds, who rescued David, his servant, from an evil sword, who puts a road through the sea and a path amidst mighty waters. May he, in his mercy, bless, persevere, guard, help, exalt, and raise very high these people in our governments and their advisors who are doing what is right against the tide. May the supreme king of kings, in his mercy, guard them and sustain them. May he save them from all distress and from all harm. May the supreme king of kings, in his mercy, instill into their hearts and the hearts of their advisors compassion, to deal with us and with all of Israel, our brothers and sisters, and those standing with us in compassion. In our days and in theirs, may Israel be restored to all the land that God gave us. And may our King, Mashiach ben David, come to Israel. May he rule. May he dwell in security. May the Redeemer come to Zion. May this be God's will. And may we say, Amen. Those of you who have been watching the news are aware of the fact that the Israeli government, once again, has, has crumbled. The government, not the country, has again crumbled. 
and they are going to be doing new elections again. Um, and that the appearance is that Prime Minister Netanyahu will be back in power again. Certainly Netanyahu is better than Bennett. Virtually anybody would be. Bennett is basically Biden. But um, um, but Israel deserves much, much better than Benjamin Netanyahu. So may we pray for Israel, that God would protect Israel and that God would bring righteous, pro-Israel, Zionist leadership to Israel, people who have the courage to promote Hashem's way in the holy nation. And may we say to this, Amen. And may we pray and sing before Hashem our national anthem as Jews and as Israel. Hatikva. The hope. Koholot baleva penima nefesh Yehudi homia. Ulfate Mizra Kadima I met the Aunt Sophia. Oh, Lord, God, Badzenu Eretz Zion Verushalayim Lihotam Khofshi Badzenu Eretz Zion Verushalayim And for this holy congregation, Beta Muna, we pray. May he who blessed our fathers, Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, Moshe, and Aharon, David, and Shlomo, and all the holy, pure congregations of God, may he bless this congregation, this holy congregation of Beit Amuna, both the old and the young, the husbands and the wives, their children and their students, and all that belongs to them. May the king of the universe bless you all. May he give you, may you merit to hear the sound of your prayers by him, that he should hear the sound of your prayers. May you all be delivered and saved and protected from all stress, all sorrow, all distress. May the word of Adonai assist you. May he protect you. May he spread over you all the sukkah of peace. May he implant among us love and brotherhood, peace and camaraderie. May Hashem remove from us all senseless hatred among us. May he break the yoke of the nations from our necks. May he fulfill for us everything that is written. It is said that Adonai, the God of your fathers, will increase your numbers a thousandfold. He will bless you as he has already spoken to do. May this be God's will. And may we say, Amen. The Amen. We're on page 391 in our Sephardic Shadur La Veliezer. <clears throat> Today is Shabbat Mevrakim Tammuz. And so on this day, we pray. May it be the will of the God of heavens to establish the house of our lot, or the Beit HaMikdash, after the coming of Mashiach Ben David. May he come soon and restore the divine presence into the Beit HaMikdash in our days. And may we say, Amen, but Amen. And may it be the will of the God of heaven 
to have compassion upon the remnant of Jews who are still holding true. May he keep all plague, destruction, sword, famine, captivity, plunder away from us and from all of the holy remnant of his people, the house of Israel. And may we all say, Amen, Amen. And may it be the will of the God of heaven to preserve for us all of the sages of Israel who are left, them and their children, their wives and their Tamadim, wherever they may live on earth. And the people said, Amen. And may it be the will of the God of heaven that we hear and receive glad tidings, tidings of deliverance and consolation from the four corners of the earth. And let us say, Amen. And may he who performed miracles for our mothers and fathers, who redeemed them from Egypt, may he redeem us today. May he return the children of Israel to their boundaries. And may he stop abortion in Israel. And may people stop killing Jewish babies. We pray this, Hashem, we beg you. Rosh Hodesh Tammuz shall be a good omen for us on June the 29th, 2022. That is this coming Wednesday <clears throat> at 6.48 p.m. A, I'm, I'm sorry, a.m. 6.48 a.m., which will be three Chalakim. May the Holy One, blessed be He, renew this month of Tammuz for us. And for all of his people, Israel, as a time of repentance, as a time for correcting our evils, wherever we may be on the earth, for goodness and for blessing, for happiness, for rejoicing, for deliveries, deliverance, for consolation, for livelihood, for sustenance, for good news and glad tidings, for rain in the proper season this time of year for the dew of blessings to fall upon us, for complete healing and speedy redemption for the people of Israel and for all of those who stand with us. And we say, Amen, the Amen. We turn now in our Siddur to page 404 for the Musaf Amidah. As is our minhag here at Beit Amuna, if you are Jewish, I invite you to spend this time in personal prayer to Hashem according to your own minhag as you do the Musaf Amidah. If you are not Jewish, I invite you to spend this time in personal prayer. Thanking Hashem for the end of Roe v. Wade and begging Hashem that abortion should end wherever it is. And as Richard says on YouTube, especially in the Holy Land of Israel, where we are killing more children than Hitler did, potentially. May God save the Jewish babies. May God save the babies of the Gentiles. May God save all the children that the death cult is seeking to destroy. <clears throat> Our Musaf Amidah will go from page 404 to page 429. Please rise now for the Musaf Amidah as you are able. And incidentally, when I say that, I mean that literally. If you can rise, I encourage you to rise. If you cannot rise because of physical malady or what have you, that's okay. That's actually a lot where you're permitted not to rise with the physical problem. But you should realize we are actually in a synagogue. <clears throat> You're not watching an internet show. Beta Muna is an actual synagogue. These are actual services. So I invite you to rise as you're able for the Musaf Amidah.
Amen. 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 Oh, say shalom bim Rama. Oh, yeah, say shalom aleinu. Ve'ako Yisrael bim ru bim ru. Amen. Yeah, say shalom. Yeah, say shalom. Shalom aleinu. Ve'ako Yisrael. Yase shalom, yase shalom, shalom aleinu. V'yakol Yisrael v'imru. 
We're on page 429 of our Shadur Le Veliezar, very bottom of the page. We have been assured by the Holy One that all of Israel has a share in the world to come. As it is said, all of your people will be righteous. They will all inherit the land forever because they are my plants, the work of my hands in which I take great pride. This requires Imuna to see this, today especially. But we have Imuna. And we know that when all of this is over, when the war of Magog is ended, when Mashiach ben Yosef is here, when Mashiach ben David comes and the truth enters into the consciousness, all the Jewish people will be redeemed for final redemption. We were redeemed at Mount Sinai, but our final redemption will come. It is guaranteed not because of our righteousness, but because we are his plant. We are the work of his hands. And in Israel, don't ask me how, Hashem takes great pride. Ain elekenu, ain karanenu, ain kamokenu, ain kamoshienu. Please turn with me now to page 444 for our Elena. When the call, the cat the chest behind me, when it is open, please rise as you are able. In honor of the Torah. It is our obligation to praise the master of all, to ascribe greatness to the creator of the world in the beginning, that he did not make us like the other nations of land, that he did not position us to be like the families of the earth, that he did not assign our portion to be like theirs, nor our lot, like all of their multitudes. For they prostrate themselves to vanities, to materialism, to nothingness. They pray to various gods that cannot possibly deliver them. But we prostrate ourselves only before the Supreme King of Kings, the Holy One. Blessed be He. He who spreads out the heavens and who establishes the earth, whose seat of glory is in the heavens above, whose abode of invincible might is in the loftiest of heavens. He is our God. There is none other. Our king is true. Everything else is insignificant. As it is written in his Torah, you shall know this day, and you shall take to heart that Adonai is God in the heavens above and upon the earth below. There is nothing else. It is for this reason that we put our hope in you, Adonai, our God, to soon behold the glory of your might in banishing idolatry from the face of the earth. So that all the false gods should be replaced with truth, so that we would all know the truth, so that we would merit to live in the kingdom of El Shaddai. And then all of mankind will invoke, will invoke your name truthfully. We will all turn back to you, Adonai, all the wicked of the earth. We will all realize and know all the inhabitants of the earth that to you alone every name must bend and every town must swear allegiance to you. Before you, Adonai, our God, we will all bow and prostrate ourselves. To the glory of your kingdom, we will all give honor. We will all accept upon ourselves the yoke of your kingdom, and then you will reign over us soon, forever and forever, for all of eternity. You will reign over us, as it is written in your Torah. 
Adonai shall reign forever and forever. And as it is said, Adonai will be king over the whole earth. On that day, Adonai will be Echad, one, and his name will be Echad. And Adonai, in your holy Torah, the following is written. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad On this holy day, Shabbat, Shabbat never came. The day after Roe v. Wade was overturned, we have partially come out of very dark days. 63 million dead Americans since 1973 in the passage of Roe v. Wade. Staggering amount. It's hard to even get your mind around numbers like that. 63 million innocent babies. So we have been walking in the valley of the shadow of death. We are still walking in the shadow of the valley of death because abortion is not over. But we have had a significant victory. And we need to remember that while the struggle continues, that while we continue to walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will not do so alone. Page 447, Tehillim 23. A psalm of David. Adonai is my shepherd, so I shall lack nothing. He makes me to lie in lush pastures. He leads me beside tranquil waters. He restores my soul. He directs me <clears throat> in the paths of righteousness for the sake of his name. And though I may walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Because you, Adonai, are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And I know you will prepare for me a table in the full presence of my enemies. And you anoint my head with oil. And my cup, Adonai, overflows. And so I look only to you, and I pray, may only good and kindness pursue me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of Adonai for all time, forever, forever. I was recently speaking with a rabbi in Floridia. Florida, who is pro-abortion. And he wanted to debate someone from the Jewish Pro-Life Foundation. I think they have found someone to do it. But I declined. And he wrote me a letter. And I replied to him why it was that I declined. I told him, if you're a rabbi, and you don't understand the fundamental biblical truth, 
choose life that you and your children may live. And the fundamental biblical truth that I knew you when you were in your mother's womb. And the fundamental biblical truth that thou shalt not murder. I see no benefit in debating you. He wrote me back. He didn't debate the point. He didn't say what the Holocaust says. Rather, he told me, what denomination are you of? You sound like a Christian. How sad. How sad. That to refer to biblical passages given to us by God is to sound like I'm a member of another religion. How sad is that? In this Tehillim that we read every week, I want you to notice something. King David, before he became king, was an incredibly brave man. He put his life on the line like very few in history have had to. He was a powerful man. He was a strong man. He was an expert warrior. But he said, Adonai is my shepherd. The Holy One of Israel. So I lack nothing. If I lay down in lush pastures, it is only by his allowing. If I reside by tranquil waters, if I experience peace, it is because he led me there. If I need my soul to be restored, it is because he has directed me in the ways of righteousness. Why did he do that? He did that for the sake of his name, not mine. And because, said David, I understand this. Even when I am in the midst of troubled times, I know he's with me, so I have no fear. David faced death on an almost daily basis, but he knew that you cannot kill David, the neshama. You might be able to kill his body if God allowed, but you couldn't touch David. The enemy cannot touch us. The enemy cannot touch you unless Hashem allows it. Sometimes, I hate to tell you this, <laughs> sometimes Hashem allows it. Many of us have died with absolute faith in Hashem. There's no guarantees in life. Life is fleeting. But if your life is devoted to Hashem, if you are trusting in Hashem, even though you may walk in the valley of the shadow of death, you're safe in the hands of Hashem. A great many of our rabbis today, both Orthodox and non-Orthodox, do not believe in God in the sense of a being who can say, Ani, I. They believe in God in the sense of a collective unconsciousness. They believe in God in the sense of some kind of supernatural metachlorians, to use a Star Wars example. But they don't actually believe in a God who is a being who can say, I need, I am. They don't believe in that God. But we do. And we may be a remnant. But we're a powerful remnant. We are the children of God. Nothing they can do can hurt us because we are the children of God. To be a child of God requires things of us. It requires us to desire the pathways of righteousness. It requires that we stand against child slaughter and the other evils of our days. It requires us to speak up. It is not a Jewish value to hide in fear, to be unwilling to speak out lest you lose your job or be canceled by communists. That is not a Jewish value. And on the other hand, it's not a Jewish value to throw our lives away either. 
We have to live a balanced life, but a life of integrity. That's absolutely essential. If you want to know God, you can know God. If you will refrain from following your own pursuits on the Sabbath day, on my sacred day, if you will call Shabbat a delight, and if you will call Shabbat honorable, and if you will honor it by not following your own ways, by not seeking your own interest or talking idly, then you can delight in not a nice favor. And I will have you ride upon the heights of the earth. I will nourish you with the heritage of Yaakov, your father. <clears throat> Thus has Adonai promised us. This is not about following man-made laws and man-made rules. This is not about being holier than thou. This is not about refusing to talk to other people because they're not good enough for you to spend your time with. And I've been told that by some people, believe it or not. That's not what it's talking about. Every day is Shabbat. Not just this day. Because every day, when you wake up in the morning, as we say in the morning blessings, God has remade you for another day. Every day. If we will make our minds and our consciousness understand this, we will know peace. We will know happiness. We will know joy. And we will have more victories like we have yesterday and today. And we will still have hardships. And the war is the struggle is not over yet. But if you will keep your mind on Hashem, if you will keep your consciousness on the Holy One, blessed be He, if you will observe His commandments, He will be with you. He will bless you, no matter what may happen. <clears throat> it is for this reason, on the Holy Sabbath day, we sing, Vishamru B'nai Yisrael Et HaShabbat La'asot Et HaShabbat Le'dor et Amberit Olam Vishamru B'nai Yisrael Et HaShabbat La'asot Et HaShabbat Le'dor et Amberit Hola, Shabbat <laughs> La so Hashem is merciful. Hashem is kind. Trust in Hashem. Trust in His ways. 
seek to understand his ways. Apply yourself to his ways without becoming a religious fanatic. Hashem wants balanced lives of balanced people who understand we're all living on the land of Hashem. And he gives us so many blessings. And on the Shabbat blessing of the wine, that wine is representative of all the good things, including what just happened yesterday. Therefore, Adonai blessed the Shabbat day and he made it holy. Attention, my masters, my teachers, my rabbis. Attention, my Talmudim, my students. Attention, friends and members of Beit Amuna congregation. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, creator of all the good things in life and the fruit of the vine. To each of you, I say, L'chaim and Shabbat Shalom. Thank you for coming together with us this week in thanksgiving and in praise and in worship of Hashem, our God. We have this week an awful lot to be happy for, to thank God for, and we do. We have a few things coming up that I want to announced to you before we go our separate ways. <clears throat> On Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern, All Heart will continue. All Heart is a time when we join together for random chat. Various topics come up. It's different every single week. Gavi and Ahuva, mostly Gavi, Ahuva told me to say, mostly Gavi, but Ahuva also gets together to sort of guide the group in its discussions on various issues. It's a great time to get to know the members of the synagogue. I don't usually come because I sort of take over when I'm there, and I don't want to do that. This is a time for the members to get together and hang out together and get to know each other. Sundays at 7 p.m. Eastern only in our Zoom room. Immediately following All Hearts, Sunday at 8 p.m., will be the Purim Tale rehearsals. We are doing a play called A Purim Tale, <clears throat> and those people who have volunteered to be voice actors, and anybody that may want to be a voice actor, we can still plug you in. I invite you to come on Sundays at 8 p.m. for the Purim Tale rehearsals. Um, how long this is going to take sort of depends on how quickly we get it down. But for now, every Sunday at 8 p.m., we are meeting for the Purim Tale Rehearsals, it's going to be a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun so far. And it's not too late to plug in. Wednesday at noon Eastern will be direct to Helam. This is the way of the Psalms as we are working our way through the book of Psalms. Rabbi Nachman tells us that when Mashiach ben David comes, it'll be through the Psalms that the redemption will be finalized. Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern, Join David and Gavi for a Hebrew learning, learning discussion group for reading practice, for questions and answers on the Hebrew holy language. Last week, nobody came, and Gavi waited for about a half an hour, and then she left. If you're interested in Hebrew, if you've been taking a Huva's Hebrew classes, which are now done, I invite you to join David and Gavi Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern time for the Hebrew language discussion group. Thursday at noon Eastern, we'll be continuing Ram Call's elucidated direct Hashem study. Thursday at 8 p.m. will be the weekly Parsha study, as always. Uh, all three, uh, those two will be on uh, all the social media sites. David and Gavi's class will only be on Zoom. Um, and then, Thursday, then in thir uh, Friday at 8 p.m. will be our Shabbat service for next week. and. Uh, at noon for the Shabbat day service, which you're currently in. That is our schedule for this week. Something else could come up, but that's what we're planning on doing. Uh, please be sure and visit betamuna.org after Shabbat and consider joining the synagogue if you haven't done that.
Consider making donations to the synagogue if you can. Every penny that you donate to the synagogue goes to the synagogue and it's Peruv. I'm a volunteer. The Hoover's a volunteer. Yosef and Gavi and David were all volunteers. So if you can donate to help us to expand our work, it is appreciated. I want to thank the people last week who did. When I went to the bank, I had five, five, I think it was five donations to deposit the bank, and that was pretty good. So please continue donating. You can do it on betamooner.org. Click the link at the top of the page. You can donate by PayPal or by Cash App, or you can send us a check, whichever works best for you. Most people go through PayPal. Uh, if you go through Cash App, we get all of it, but, uh, but donations are definitely appreciated. So we now are able to sing a little bit, to spend some time together with joy and with happiness, because despite what happens in life, the good or the not so good, you're not alone if you're a member of Beta Muna Congregation. We want you with us. We want you here. We want you with us. We want you to be our mishpaka, our spiritual family. To that end, we remind you how great and how joyous it is when everyone gets together. Looking over real quickly to our chat screen, we have a few comments and questions. Um, yeah. Uh, Cole, uh, PayPal does take a percentage. I've been trying to get them to accept us as a nonprofit, which we are, but to date, they do still take a percentage of your donation. It's not a big percentage, but they do take a percentage. And if you send it through Cash App, we get 100% of it. Um, but PayPal is fine. We get most of it that way as well. Um, so the Hebrew thing <laughs> is on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Yeah, Wednesdays at 6 p.m. with David and Gavi in the Zoom room only. It started as a study uh, of Huva. Huva used to teach a Hebrew class. This was a review class for that. But the Hebrew class is over. But Gavi and David have volunteered to still do the class. So you can take time reading the Hebrew, and David will help you with pronunciation and that sort of thing. And they will help you pretty much with whatever you need. It is Wednesdays at 6 p.m. with David and Gavi for Hebrew. Because of David's health, it is possible they sometimes do have to cancel out. If that happens, please be patient. But they both love doing the Wednesday class, and they do the very best that they can. Um, so it is Wednesday night at 6. Thank you, Shmuel. Uh, Uh, Call says, I won't give PayPal or anyone else even a penny of my side. I, I appreciate that. You can send a check or a money order with the T. Thank you. I remember we were talking about that. Uh, if you send me a check or a money order, we get all of it. Or if you want to donate online, you can donate through Cash App and we get all of it. <clears throat> um, I'm still trying to get the thing set up with, uh, with PayPal. If they recognize you as a nonprofit, which we legally have been for over a year, they're not supposed to take out a percent. But for some reason, they still haven't answered me on that one. Um, but a mail order, money order we get, plus if you send me the tea, I can try that tea you were talking about, which would certainly be great. And that'd be hard to send on the internet, so to speak. So again, we are happy and we are joyful to be with all of you. You are our mishpaka. We're glad that you're here. Hene matovu manai, shevet a king gam yakad. Hene matovu manai, shevet a king gam yakad. Hene matova la 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 he name a tovu manai, shevet a king gam yakad. 
how good and pleasant it is for Mishpaka to sit together. How good and pleasant it is for Mishpaka to sit together. He named a tova, la 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 He named a tova, la 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 Avinu shalom aleikum. Avinu shalom aleikum. Avinu shalom aleikum. Avinu shalom 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 aleikum. Oravinu chai. Oravinu chai. Oravinu 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 chai. Am Israel. Am Israel. Am Israel chai. Am Israel. Am Israel. Am Israel chai. I'm Israel, I'm Israel, I'm Israel, Kai. I'm Israel, I'm Israel, I'm Israel, Kai. O Jibo Shalom Aleinu, O Jibo Shalom Aleinu, O Jibo Shalom Aleinu, Be'al Kulam. O Jibo Shalom Aleinu, O Jibo Shalom Aleinu, O Jibo Shalom Aleinu, Be'al Kulam. Ve'al kulam shalom, aleinu ve'akol haolam, salam, 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 aleinu ve'akol haolam, salam, salam. Peace will come upon us, peace will come upon us, peace will come upon us, and on everyone, and on everyone, salam. On us and on everyone, salam, salam, salam. On us and on everyone, shalom, 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 shalom. Don't olam share my lot, but it im kol yetir nivra. La it na sa be kev zo kol as I may let Shimoni crave a kare ki glot ha kol liva hado yim lot nora vahu haya vahu hove vahu yee vati fara vahu ekad vain sheni leham shilo lehak bira balira shi balita glit. Velo haos, the hamish rave who eli, the kai goli, the sur heavily by it zara, the who nisi humanosli, minat kosi, by yo mek rabe ado, of kidruki, by it is shan vaira, by imruki, gaviati. Adonai li velo vira. The Lord and Master of the Universe, who reigned before anything else was created, when everything was made by his will, then he was acknowledged as king. And once everything ends, he still all alone shall reign. He was, he is, and he will ever be in glory. And he is one. There is none other to compare to him, to join with him. The Almighty is without beginning, without end. And so it is that to him belongs all dominion and all power. And he is our God, our living God. And to him it is that we flee in times of grief. He is our miracle and our refuge. And he answers us on the day that we call. And so it is that to him alone we commit our spirits, both in the time of sleep and the time of awakening. And when our spirits finally do leave, we know that God will be with us. It is for that reason that we have absolutely no cause for fear and no fear. Shabbat Shalom.
שבת שלום. שבת 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 שלום. שבת שלום. היי, שבת שלום. היי, שבת 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 שלום. שבת שבת. שבת שבת שלום, שבת שבת, שבת שבת שלום, שבת שלום, היי שבת שלום, היי שבת 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 שלום, שבת שלום, היי שבת שלום, היי שבת 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 שלום. Thank you friends, until next time, may God bless you. May God keep you, and may God cause his face to shine evermore upon each and every one of you.